What's up and welcome back to Kinda Funny Sony's Spider-Man Universe in Review, God, formerly so known as Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel Characters. Oh, shit. Uh, as of August 2021, it's now known as Sony's Spider-Man Universe uh, that, as of 2024, is still going. Good. <laughs> and he thought it was the end. And he thought, oh, this is going to be the final movie we're ranking in this. And I reminded him about what? Uh, Craven. Craven the Hunter in theaters this August, everybody. Can't Strap wait. in. Craven Strap. Moorhead. <laughs> uh, we needed. Uh, we should up ask Cameron to update that thing to put up uh, after the Sony thing, the PlayStation Hide Your Senses thing, uh, brought to you by Pepsi or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah we we'll add that in. Makes a lot of sense. You'll, we'll, you'll understand why in, in just a few minutes, everybody. Because this, of Did course, this movie have product placement for Pepsi? <laughs> huh. Huh. Uh, of course, this is kind of funny. It's in review where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Um, if you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube uh, to get our shows ad-free. And you can get an exclusive daily show, The Greg Way, where Greg talks about whatever he wants to each and every day, often ah! answering your questions. Um, thank you to... <laughs> Our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kashan Patel, Nathan Lamoth, Karen Linder, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, and Casey Kern. We appreciate all of you so very, very much. Today, we are brought to you by Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Factor, but we'll tell you about that later. Uh, today, we are talking about Madam Web. With a runtime of one hour and 56 mm -hmm. minutes, it was released no, 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 there, on February 14th, 2024. Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. It must be well. Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, what, what movie is this quote from? You all watched it. Valentine's Day. Bummer. Ghostbusters? Two. Damn, I should have known. I really should have known. known. It's a funny moment. From as, funny as of recording, it is, it is Monday, February 12th right now. Nine years ago on February 12th, I met Gia. The love of my life. Wow. At a movie theater. What starring movie theater? The Kabuki. The Kabuki in Japantown. Watching a movie starring Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Johnson. Today, I watched a movie at the Kabuki mm -hmm. starring Dakota Johnson. Today, mm -hmm. your relationship With the loves ended. of my life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. For, for I, years, every the year. The threat of your relationship <laughs> began before you, there it was, was born. A, there was a look into the future, uh -huh. and it was a it was a worse future. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? I, if I'm not mistaken, too, I think we were in Theater 8 today. I mm -hmm. think it was Theater 7 that we saw. That's crazy. <laughs> It, that, one, it was. Honestly. It was one over. Right? It was one over. Yeah, I yeah. remember that. Very. Did, did they have it up on a laptop screen? <laughs> did they? I'll tell you what. I didn't. I didn't know Joey was now booking Sony Picture screeners. We had the smallest screen. So you sorry, know? Oh Joey. My God. So sorry. Oh, the second I saw it, I was like, "Don't do it, Nick." Just keep it to yourself. This, this you don't have to put the energy in the Sam, office. Somebody took a photo of Andy we're not for gonna scale. Show, we're what? Not gonna show it. What do you mean? Ah, nah, nah, nah. I didn't get approval. I didn't get approval. It's important. It's important. Now. We got to make sure we don't break embargoes. Yeah. It's not we're breaking anything. But this isn't live, is it? I know, it's, you know have they ever I mean? seen a fucking movie theater this small? I, what are you trying to hide, Kabuki, with your embargoes? I we all you know the jigs up. You got postage stamps in there. You're trying to show films on. They don't actually show movies in there, though, right? They, they do, do, but it's Fuck, like small. Really? <laughs> it's like it's like very very small, like yeah. in, indie movies. This was, I mean, to be fair, it's we like, did not have a ton of people in our screeners, so it would have been a waste a of, of a big. And, and I will theater. say, it, it was. The, all jokes aside, I think it might be the smallest screen I've ever seen a movie on. No, for sure. But it's the smallest the screen. The sound I've ever was seen. great. It was the smaller than was yours. Awesome. Smaller than yours. There's been, oh, yeah. there's been one that. theater I've seen you. smaller, and it was when Joey booked that theater for us to go see that yeah. one. <laughs> it's so far away. We're not talking about the theater, though. We're talking about the film. Okay, everybody, this is Madam Web. Like I said, February 14th, one hour, 56 runtime, directed by S.J. Clarkson. Clarkson. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, her credits include the series Doctors, Casualty, East Enders, Footballers, Wives, and Life on Mars. You familiar with any of those shows, Nick? Nope. I've heard of some of those titles. I, I think I've heard Life on Mars. As well as the American series. Okay, that, that might be. Oh, it. The Americans. That might be. It. Okay, so the sure. Amer no, 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 no. These were all foreign those were, series. Yeah, those were ah, yeah, as well as the American series. American series, Heroes, House, Dexter, and Ugly Betty. Okay. 
Okay. Heroes. No wonder this thing looked the way it looked. Like we were talking about how it was shot in the punches. House. Roadhouse. Um, and yeah, so the music was done by Johan Sondervist, uh, a Swedish film score composer. He's twice been nominated for the European Film Award for Best Composer for his film scores. Pretty much all I got on him. I will say this might be the most... I don't even want to say forgettable, non-existent score in a superhero sure. movie I've ever seen. There's long stretches of silence where there's even I'm like, nothing. why is there no, there's just nothing? no music at all? They're in a cab for a long time, <laughs> and there's not a lot of talking at points, and yeah. it's dead quiet. Yeah, so it was, that was interesting. Um, a budget of $80 million, so fairly lean compared to standard superhero fare. Um, and box office is projected. The movie's not out yet, so we'll have to, to wait and see. But it's projected to gross around $25 million over its six-day opening time frame. Good. Yeah, I'll just commit to the seven days. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if opening weekend could be six days, mm -hmm. just give it the, the seven. problem is if you put it on the seventh day, then it's the weekend prior. So it goes back to just only count two it days. All. Count the year. Yeah. You know? just said to I mean, jokes day. aside, I don't think that the end final thing is going to be much different than this initial no. offering, right? Um, but but anyway, that that's that. Um, I want to real quick uh, get, get our – let's do spoiler-free thoughts on this one. Sure. Because uh, we were recording before – it's out officially for this movie. Let's get spoiler-free thoughts before going into full spoilers. And, of course, in, in review fashion, we're going to go through the plot and everything. Um, Nick Scarpino, let's start with you. What did you think about Madam Web? This movie felt like a movie that movie studios thought comic book movies should be in the 90s. It fits, in my opinion, like squarely at the bottom if we were to rank all of like the Blades or the the, the Ben Affleck Daredevils or so any... Don't bring Blade into this. Well, right? Blade would be the top of that. Thank you. If you're going to ask that question one day, well, maybe we'll get to it. But, yeah, maybe but we should it, do a it, fun in review for a change. Stay got me stuck in the Spider-Verse. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I it, it's, it's just a hot mess. It, it, it feels like a movie from a bygone era. It doesn't make a ton of sense. And I thoroughly believe that in 20 years, people, there's going to be a small cult following for this film because it's so out of sorts and so weird and so many poor choices made that midway through, I was like, I can't tell if it's the acting, the writing, the directing, all three or some combination of them that is making this movie so off the walls bad. But I enjoyed watching it the entire time. I think it's best summed up, and this isn't really a spoiler, but it is a specific about the movie. We were talking about the product placement earlier. Is where, there some? What's that? Is there? Uh, for well, what? Interesting Ambulances? questions. I mean, for, for the, a, keen, a keen eye will notice. <laughs> At one point, she goes to a party, and uh, Adam Scott's character offers her the product placement of the film, which is Pepsi. And she goes, I don't want one of those. Yeah. She wants a that, beer, though. She I want a beer. She doesn't say, I want a Coke. You know what I mean? But who in their right mind would be like, here's how our product's going to be placed in this film. You're going to offer it to the hero of the, the movie, and they're going to say, I was like, hey, Captain Mary, you want a Coca-Cola? No, I don't want Absolutely that. Absolutely not. I'd Absolutely rather have not. alcohol. I'd rather have beer. It's pretty on point with how the marketing circuit has been leading up to it, you know? It is. Yeah, it is. I can't wait to hear your guys' opinion on it. It is exactly what I thought this movie was going to be. I had a blast watching it, not for the reasons why I should have a blast watching it, mostly because I was just with you guys watching it, and we were sort of giggling, not in the right moments. Um, and yeah, it's exactly what you'd think it was. Madam Webb. Andy Cortez. I'm really glad I didn't sit next to you all because I would have been <laughs> laughing so uncontrollably hard. Like, there was a lot of moments where I was holding in giggles, and I didn't want to, like, I saw the usher kind of to the right of me, did you see me like shaking it off? Just, just real quick, sorry. I do. I do want to say this is a very rare instance that for this screener, there was no one else there. There was like a handful. Of, there was maybe was two, was other, two other maybe people. Two other yeah. people. <laughs> we outnumbered and, people two to us, one. <laughs> and, us. and so because of that, I kind of had to give a note to the boys beforehand of being like, guys, I know what we're getting into. We need to be grown-ups here, and we need to try not to laugh. And it was so hard. We for made all it of three us. quarters we of the way. We did pretty well. We did yeah. pretty well. I forget what it was when I turned to Tim and he just took his hat and put it over I, his eyes. <laughs> yeah. And what what yeah. stupid fucking so, shit happened? So anyway, Eddie, yeah, you and, you sat. You ended up sitting a couple rows in front of us. I, I was in the second Thank row, and again, this just kind of tells you how small the screen was. The second row, great seating. Like it looked amazing up there. It's like um, you're watching your phone. Uh, this movie was just like. A lot of different things being thrown into one shitty stew. Just a lot of bad ingredients. And I feel really bad for a lot of the actors in this movie. Because there are... It's so interesting. Like there, there are moments that I feel like I would have had genuine laughs at if it wasn't in a bad movie. But the whole tone and everything surrounding everything else makes those moments... It makes me like... 
not want to laugh out of like <laughs> out of spite. You know what I mean? Like, because there, there there's a couple decent you know written moments between some of these characters that could have been in an MCU movie. And if that if I'm enjoying that whole package, and then I see this, I go, ah, that's a good little line, a mm-hmm. uh, little back and forth right there. But I I was so not enjoying all of this whole experience. I it, I. I've said it a handful of times throughout these interviews that like there's a lot of these movies that we watch and review that feel like they went through a million reshoots and feel like a ton of different hands were touching this project and suddenly it's like oh did they switch cameramen <laughs> or like it's what's going on with the editing why is everything ADR this is just like a fucking disaster of a movie and yet it still won't kill this universe somehow they're gonna find somehow. a way to bring this back but like. Uh, Nick talking about like this feeling like a superhero of a bygone era. I disagree. This like this doesn't even speak to superhero fans. Like this is barely a superhero movie. You know, like there's some glimpses near the end, no spoilers, but for the most part, we're not seeing a whole lot of anything. We're, we're it's just like <laughs> this movie's a fucking disaster, man. It really, really is. And I feel I felt really, really bad because I know there's uh, some commenters will be like, ah, oh, they had their minds made up before they went into the theater. I love being pleasantly surprised. I would love surprised. to see those comedy. I would love to know who's coming in fucking swinging from anywhere. <laughs> well, I, I just love being, I love being disproven. I, you know, we saw it with the, you know, our recent reviews of uh, Kung Fu Panda of me thinking like, oh, part one's, you know, I remember that being good. I've never seen part two or three. They probably suck. They're probably dream, uh, just normal DreamWorks sequels. And I actually really liked them. I wanted to be proven wrong here. And this movie is just like a disaster front to back. I feel so bad for like Adam Scott and, uh, and, um, I Dakota Johnson. Think, yeah, Dakota Johnson. All, all, the, Sweeney. all of the rest of the cast of this movie, it's like, man, they're going to have really good careers. And this is going to be such a little dark spot on their, on their like resume. Um, yeah, this movie's so incoherent uh, at times. And by, <laughs> there's some sequences near the end that again, I was having a hold in my laughter. I was having to hold my laughter in from a lot of different readings of dialogue and just, random lines thrown in where it's like where did that line come out from whose script was that in you know uh but by the mouth did that come from yeah uh, yeah that's (laughs) very very odd man uh yeah a lot of the dialogue did feel like you know uh ai writes a script in a lot of moments where certain responses weren't warranted and had no business being in there uh and by the end of it yeah there's a some action sequences where the characters are just kind of running around doing shit. And I was like, I had my, ma- my hand over my mouth, like trembling in laughter. I looked like Greg when he was on the ground doing the, we were doing the what's in the box challenge. Like that's how I felt in that moment. And that's probably the most fun I had throughout the movie. And I didn't stay for the post credit scene, but I'm very excited to hear about what happens. Greg Miller, what do you think about Madam Web? You know, we introduced the kind of funny review scale for games, and I, I I always thought it should come to in review, but we don't ever do it that way. But I'm bringing it today, and like this is a one out of five. Like this is a terrible movie. Like this is like the epitome of God. I'm here wasting my time. You know what I mean? Like yep. I watch, and it's like again, it wasn't for me. It was not so bad. It's good. Like we're gonna be able to laugh a lot about. The, I mean, you do. You're laughing at it. It's just such a dysfunctional film. And like, there's so many, like, to the cult classic thing or the cult following. I think the story behind it would be more fascinating than anything. Mm. I'm looking forward to that. Of like, why is the villain completely ADR'd? Did they replace this guy? Did they decide that he needs an accent that he didn't have before? Like, no, I, what I, the fuck happened? To me, here? it just smacks of they were trying to fix the plane while it was in the air. Mm. I think there was a they lot of rewrites. All his lines. I think they changed all his lines mm. in ADR. I think they tried to should make some level of coherent story happen yeah. as they were shooting and editing this film, <laughs> and, and that's what it feels like. And I feel like on top of you know that, like it's just like overall, this is such a monkey paw situation of like. To go back to me on my bed reading Wizard Magazine, being stoked for when they, you know, fan cast films that I, you thought you'd never get. To be this far into the superhero cycle and be like, you're get, we're, we're down the line enough that you're getting Madam Web films starring real actors. These are re- coming to theaters like, holy shit, that's got to be awesome. And it's like, no, we're to the point that so many of these things are fucking trash, right? It's, and, uh, mainly Sony stuff. You could argue whatever you want about MCU, da, da, da. But like where we're at, it's just like, God damn. And it's like, again, we saw the trailers and the meme ability of them and all stuff. And you hope beyond hope that they would do something cool. Even in this, like when I'm watching this film, that isn't a superhero film. Cause it's really not about being a superhero, right? Like it's tangentially Marvel and there's a bunch of st- cool stuff you could do with that. I know we'll talk about horror and what they could have done there and da, 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 da. It's still like, I'm watching this thing and I'm like, 
it sucks to be here for two hours, and the only thing I'm possibly looking forward to is going to be an Easter egg at the end or a post credit scene or something to make any of this salvageable. And instead, you get to the end, and it's like, nope, none of that. It's just, this is what it is, and this is... Uh, you'd like to imagine. You'd pray to God this is a one and done, but, like, I don't... Sony's fucking crazy. As soon as we started talking, I leaned to you, and I was just like, Som- somebody has to be stopped. Someone at Sony has to be stopped. I do not understand. Get David how, Zaslav over there. How <laughs> are they there. able to <laughs> shit out movies like this? <laughs> and meanwhile, funny. WB's like, we are going to can ours. Yeah. Rather than publish our movies that aren't up to snuff, we think, maybe, who knows? Like, Batgirl, sure, I'm sure it was a pile of shit, whatever. I would still would have liked to have seen it. But, like, because it would have been a fucking superhero, you would have been doing superhero stuff. Doesn't matter. Michael Keaton. Could have had him. Could have had him Anyways, instead, you know, like Wiley Coyote or whatever, just getting thrown out because like, oh, it's funny, but it's not like, what the fuck is happening that why, I don't understand the Sony business model that these can continue to come out and what fucking deal they have with the Marvel that they have to keep doing this and it's worth the loss because they hold on to Spider-Man. Like, I don't fucking understand it and I hate it. Tim, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I want to start this by saying I entirely agree with you where it's like somebody needs to be stopped. Like, this is, we should never have got here. I can't believe we're here. There's been so much trash around this from Sony. Then they have the Spider-Verse movies that are absolutely, like, potentially the pinnacle of what these even can be. Um, and it, it sucks, and I wish that this wasn't the case because I don't want to deal with these characters. I'm on the opposite side of you, Greg, where it comes down to watching this movie. I'm fucking fingers crossed. Please do not set anything up that I actually care about. Mm-hmm. Stay the fuck away mm-hmm. from it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, that's, that's the energy I'm bringing into it but i gotta say i was i'm more close to nick than uh anybody on this where i was smiling the entire way through this movie is horrible but it is a good bad movie and it is i think so committed to that vision for better or worse on purpose or not i'm not quite sure but i gotta believe that they knew what they were doing um and maybe they didn't when they were first shooting it but they found this uh through the rewrites and the adr lines and all of that shit added up to just absolute insanity that seemed to seen something was going to make me smile harder or cringe harder in a way that I'm like, what the absolute fuck is going on? This movie is going to be a cult classic. If cult classics can even exist with the way that media works these days, cult classics back in the day where the things were like, oh, they didn't really get their due or their shine. And there weren't 10 million movies right. coming out, let alone 10 million genre superhero films coming out. Sure. But to everyone's point, this is less a superhero film and it's more just like a, a, a just weird attempt to like name things people have heard about before together with character with actors that people are familiar with and like and um the the vibes for me like it leaned way more final destination than i expected mm, it to sure not even just in like actual i can see the future plot and death dealings with but the way it's edited and the the campiness of it and just like the the utter ridiculousness of like if something stupid can happen, there was no less than three times that characters were doing something on the screen and Nick looked at me and like mimed something stupid as if like in a parrot in, in the scary movie version of this, they would do this and then they do it. And it's just like, holy hell. Um, I, my, the best way I could put it is this is the movie that that trailer was for. Yeah. Like I enjoyed Accurate. watching this movie as much as I enjoyed watching that trailer, which is to say a lot. Like it was a fun time. I don't know that I ever want to watch this again by myself. Actually, I can say I never do. Watching this with people, yeah, in the future, I'm so down for it because it is so ridiculous. And we're going to look back like Sydney Sweeney did what? Yeah. And I think so much of this is held together so beautifully by Dakota Johnson, who God bless her, just She's there, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like she's mm-hmm. just there. And if it weren't for her, I don't think I'd, I'd I'd be positive on this at all. And like to be clear, this is a bad. It's bad. But like I enjoyed the time with it. I wish that the movie didn't exist. I wish that we were in a much better place. The choices that they make with characters that we fucking love are batshit insane and so stupid. But they don't get in my way. And so for mm. that, I give them credit. I give them credit because like the, it's not like it's a carnage and venom situation. No, yeah. You know, I I think my. My issue with it is like I I hate that feeling of when you're watching something that you're hoping is good, but you're watching it and it feels like the parody superhero movie in an Adam McKay movie where the actors in that Adam McKay comedy are watching a superhero movie and this is the product. I always think back to to In the Office where there's that dramatic movie starring Jack Black. Yeah. <laughs> and like... And you know that all of this is just like bad on purpose. Like that's how so much of it of this movie felt like. But I can I agree with you. I think it'd be awesome to get uh, just watch other people's opinions and watch other people's reactions to these moments because it is 
it's like it, it never really disappoints in being a bad movie. <laughs> I'm so mad that we watched this the way that we did. Yeah, I would love to be around people and hear people react to how fucking insane it all is and just like just obtuse. Ob yeah, it's like every decision. Like anytime <laughs> you think, oh, th this might go. So actually, there's not even moments that I thought it might be good. Like I disagree with you, Andy. Of like, I did not go into this like hoping to be surprised that it was a good movie. I went into this hoping that it was going to be this bad and not mm. Black Adam bad. Mm. And it, this movie's not Black Adam bad. This movie's not Shazam too bad. This movie has it, it's bad with with things to enjoy about it. But again, is that where we should be for a no. Spider Verse movie? Absolutely fucking not. Um, for a Dakota Johnson movie, you know what? I'm kind of there for it. <laughs> so, um, what's up? I Maybe? guess just like after watching Severance, I'm just like, what, Adam Scott, man, what are you doing in this movie, bro? <laughs> Get like, a paycheck. Yeah. I mean, Get yeah, a nice little paycheck. Sure, but it's a couple like, days in New York. No, but I mean, the, here's the thing about but, Adam no, Scott. But I, but, Get wet. But him being in this movie reminds me of when really cool actors die in the MCU. And I'm like, oh man, I wish they could have stuck around for a couple more I want Adam Scott in the MCU. I want with the him multiverse, to be anything can happen in worry. bigger movies that matter. But I don't want him to be Ben Parker. <laughs> well, the important, the important thing is that this movie, no Hold matter on, how it does, real quick, I'm gonna say this right now. Henceforth, spoilers. there will be spoilers. Okay. So just, just everybody, spoilers. prepare yourself. Sorry, go. Peter Parker Spider. -Man. I'm gonna say at the very least, this movie's not gonna hurt Adam Scott's career. Because Adam Scott has such a varied career where he's done silly movies, bad movies, good movies, good shows. I think he'll be okay. But I'll disagree with Tim on one thing is that you said this was good, bad. I don't think it is. I think it's bad, bad. Agreed. But I think it's so bad, bad that it, it has a new category, which is like it's fascinating to watch something this bad. Because from people who make a you know profession out of trying to analyze these films, it broke my brain. I was legitimately watching from scene to scene, and I'm like, this character of, of Dakota Johnson – is so tonally off from scene to scene that it's almost like she's not even in this movie and it's fascinating to watch. And it is fascinating to see that a director directed that shot in the ambulance mm -hmm. and was like, that's the take we're going with. Yeah. It feels that's like a social one. experiment. Like, I, 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 there was a moment sitting there in the theater, I'm wondering, like, man, uh, like, some, I'm being pranked right mm -hmm. now. This doesn't feel like a real movie when we, we start off uh, the movie and then suddenly there's, <laughs> the the push in Michael Bay action shots is like whoa where what the fuck and then we don't see that style of shooting until the end of the movie again uh -huh. what the fuck is going on in this film dude like none of it makes sense all of it is just so again from scene to scene you know you don't know what you're gonna get at least that, like it keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat wondering like how's the next scene gonna be as bad or earlier we were talking uh we we're all talking out there and Greg was telling Barrett that like all you know the main villain felt like he was ADR at 100% of the time. And Barrett was like, was he recast or something? I was like, fuck, I, if he was, I don't want to know who the first guy was because this guy was not enjoyable at all. Like, this guy had oh God. horrible moments of, like, everything. C-tier, straight to fucking DVD where it's, like, a movie starring a guy who used to be in a movie with John Cena at one point. You know, like, it was just... It was just all around terrible. I, I do have a question though, like you about the good bad versus bad good, yeah. whatever, whatever the fuck sure. it is. If this isn't a good bad movie, like what is a good bad movie? Because uh, to me, this is this is exactly the, what I'm thinking of. Of a, a whatever I'm trying to say is like it's this movie. So like uh, to put to put in context, the heat, in my opinion, would be a good <laughs> bad movie, right? Where you watch it, and I recognize that you three are going to hate this film, but I am for some reason laughing my ass off. So I, it fits into the category where most films honestly fit, which is it's not Dune, right? But it's not Venom 2 or Morbius, right? Where Morbius is so bad, you're like, yeah. I'm bored five minutes into this Morbius. and I can't deal with this. This is, this is on the lower part or probably the higher part of just a bad, bad movie in that I can't find anything other than the fact that it's so bad that it's fascinating to say good about it. So like, Does how that make sense? Whereas the heat... Or, or Spy, or movies like that, where it's like most people are like, oh, I didn't find that funny. Or like the other guys, in, in my opinion, would be one of those where I'm like, I don't like it, but I recognize why Andy would like it. So that fits into the bad good Wilfred movie. Wilfred Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. I tried watching it again. I couldn't get it. What? I can't. It's, it's, one of the, exa it's one of those where I like, it just doesn't, doesn't work, work for me. This makes sense then. <laughs> it just doesn't work but, for me. Yeah. And I, I guess that makes sense to me because like with this, it's like I was like in the, the jokes that make you laugh and stuff. To me, it's just it's the Marvel references that they just get wrong. It's the choices they make sure. about any characters that we know or care about. The characters that we all know so well, like just getting into this, Peter Parker's mom's in this, all right? Yeah. Peter, we see Peter Parker get 
birthed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And never they, say his name. Though. They treat his name as if it's this fucking giant megaton reveal. It's Peter Goddamn Parker. It's not about. We him, know what's this happening. Isn't about they, him. They, they, Great like, responsibility. Cassie, we right. have we have Ben. We have Ben Parker. Yeah. We have. Uh, uh, just the, the entire family set up, but they refuse to say May or Peter. Why? And like, not only do they refuse to say it, every time they're about to, there's a fucking jump scare. A jump <laughs> every scare. time. It's but like saying Peter is like I, causing the web. To, I stand to make- by. I stand by that. Uh, my, I think one of the cut scene, one of the deleted post credit scenes was supposed to be Marissa Tomei de showing up. And they'd be like, by the way, this is my girlfriend May. And the door opens and it's a younger Marissa Tomei and they cut. I mean, perhaps. Perhaps, but just so you know, Greg, there was never <laughs> any planned thing where it was that universe. Oh, I know. Cause oh, I'm well aware of that. Originally, this takes place in, uh, even now, this takes place in the early 2000s for some godforsaken reason here. Like, why? I um, guarantee they had a great reason. Well, the reason was Tobey Maguire. The, the Sam Raimi universe. And then they just gave up on that. And then eventually, like, Andrew Garfield's going to be in this fucking movie as Spider-Man. That didn't happen. And so now here we are with this. With no, we get a baby. How would it have made sense to be in the Raimi universe? Because Spider Man would have already been Spider Man then, right? I, yeah. Would I that know. have been the web? No, it's what we would have seen the web. We would have been done yeah. some web stuff. The uh, she can be three people at once. The uh, ghost, ghost Four versions of her. I think. The thing that I really hated Shane about Buckley, the right? whole name teasing <laughs> was that. Like uh, again, it's Maybe not infinite. <laughs> it'd be like if this movie came out and we had never seen a Spider Man movie, and they're like, "What's his name?" Well, so, I don't know. We're thinking about, and you as the audience go, "Oh shit!" You know, it's, it's gonna be Peter. But like, I don't know why they treated it in such. A, they treated it in a way where like the people making this movie are assuming that the audience has never seen like a superhero movie before. Like, dude, they're gonna lose their shit at See, this I, moment. That's why I think it does double back. I think it was you that said you didn't agree with Nick, but it might have been you. I agree that it feels like with those early two thousand X Men movies, what. It feels like it's from that vein in that timeline. Like, I feel like we're out of time with that timeline where it's like, this is what superhero movies can be. They don't even need the superheroes. We're doing this thing and we'll make all these cool little references and they'll, they'll fucking nerd out about it. Yeah, for me, it felt like those those moments. No one will ever go to see a, a Spider-Man in tights movie, but they'll watch this one where we're, we're ca- it's horror we're playing and it's around this. With it. yeah. uh, to me, it just, I mean, this was my perception of it, but it's probably not. It just felt like they don't know where they're gonna they're like how they didn't they, they didn't have faith in where how they were gonna commit to this so they're like let's just not say sure. these things right let's 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 tease the audience out As people if that will get stopped it stopped them for putting dr michael or but putting fucking vulture in morpheus fair hey but, i don't know why me but i think it's got so to do with spider-man we should team up well, very interesting <laughs> um yeah those moments were i mean to be <laughs> someone needs to be stopped yeah. like sony needs to be stopped figure it out man how has it happened this way that warner brothers is just Fucking firing people, hiring people, killing movies, dude. And Sony's just like, oh no, fucking go. Who cares? Don't get the money, make the money. We yeah. don't give a shit. Yeah. Fuck it. We should pitch movies to Sony because we'd get them made. Look, we should look at their roster of characters, find the one that's had one appearance, and we try to get that movie made. God bless. Uh, we're going to take a quick word from our sponsors, and then we're going to get to the plot of this bad boy. We are brought to you by Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a standalone game that welcomes fans and newcomers alike. You don't need to have played Final Fantasy VII Remake or any other Final Fantasy titles to play and enjoy Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The combat is not traditional turn-based and has more action-focused gameplay, with even deeper improvements since Remake with new synergy attacks and team-based combos. And there are large open sections to explore with Cloud and his comrades venturing across the planet, their fates unwritten, making every step in the expansive world outside Midgar fresh and mysterious, and of course, there are dozens of mini-games. There's a story recap video of Final Fantasy VII Remake for those interested in learning more about the story so far, and those looking to experience Final Fantasy VII Remake fully can pre-order the Final Fantasy VII Remake and Rebirth Twin Pack, which includes the game plus the DLC episode Intermission at no extra cost. You can download and play a demo of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth right now on the PlayStation Store, and you can pre-order the game in the link in the description. The wait is almost over. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is out February 29th. Get hyped. This episode's brought to you by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan plus, veggie, and more. What are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. 
Two minute meals allow you to fuel up fast with Factors restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Factors less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing six to 18 meals per week. Plus you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. So there's no prepping, cooking or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off. And the plot of this movie is so simple. I don't know why, I don't know why the guitar turned off, sorry. I don't know. I think maybe my battery died. Oh, here we go. Here's a plot. Here's a plot. Here's a plot. And I learned this guitar riff before the show started. Mm -hmm. yep. It's really hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. Spider Man. Here's a plot. plot. Here's a plot. <laughs> Mad <Matt and laughs> Web. This is Spider Plot. Adam Scott. <laughs> Man, Here's a plot. Before, wait, before, before we start the plot, does it. Did everyone watch the. the the Deadpool and Wolverine teaser sure from yesterday. Sure is it wild that we got that yesterday and then we watched this movie today? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's wild, it really right? is. It's wild. <laughs> Welcome to the Peruvian Amazon. <laughs> the year is 1973. Yes. It's Kevin's birthday. Ten years after the murder of JFK in Dallas, Texas. Mm. An American tragedy. Yeah, you would laugh. He looked at me like I fucking have something to do Andy, with it. Andy, I just want you to know that all throughout this interview, every time you look away, he has been turning that top, one of those knobs on your on your guitar. So Hi, if the bottom that's what string we call is out Easter of key, egg. that's an Easter egg. That's, that's your fault. Easter egg. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck you. Ah, uh, anyways, we get there and guess what? Trailer didn't lie. But Mad it kind of did. Madam Webb's mom is there researching uh, spiders in the Amazon, right? Why is she there? Well, her and Mr. Sims, a.k.a. Ezekiel, are out there in the Peruvian Amazon looking for this uh, spider that's got a peptide in it and it can heal. And they, they, they can never find these spiders. How many words do they say here? Lots. I'm keeping it to peptide. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Pepti. Uh, Pepsi. <laughs> 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 Anyways, these spiders have never been seen with the naked eye, but you know, this pregnant lady is in the jungle and she's going to fucking find them, of course. Holy shit. I can't believe this was the plot. Like, when we start this movie and she's like, I'm looking for a spider and she's just in the goddamn Amazon. Peruvian mm -hmm. Amazon. Peruvian Amazon. Peruvian Amazon. Looking for this fucking spider and like, there's this one little tiny location where they find it and they go back to this location so many times and anytime a character needs to find this fucking spider, spot. they know exactly where to well, go. They have the picture. They have a picture. Oh and the God. picture of, in the, in the everyone, Amazon. Here's the thing. The in Amazon, way, not huge, it, right? But way, roughly the size of the average backyard. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to find the tree there. Yeah. What I think this scene needed to be, and what it obviously wasn't, was like they needed this to be like the beginning of Jurassic Park, where it sets up the mystery of what's going on, right? Remember the beginning where they find the, you know, amber. Uh, yeah, oh, they find cool. the amber. Whatever. Oh, no, the cloud. I'm thinking the amber sequence where, okay, okay. where he goes in and finds the amber. Like, we found it. It's like, oh, my God, this cool thing. But instead. and, th and So it, much exposition immediately. It's Carrie Blah. Bish, I think is how you say her last name, or Bichet. Bichet, Bichet, yeah, Bichet, yeah. Bichet yeah. Who is, I love her. She's Hall great. She's fire. in Hall and Catch Fire. She's Incredible. been in a bunch of other stuff. I think she was in, uh, I, went to, I think she was in Narcos Mexico with the other guy that's in the scene. Not not the bad guy, but the other guy who was like the good looking older guy with the cool the spider hair. spider dude who shows up. Who's and he's like, like, I'm going to tell you everything. One, yeah, day, yeah. one day this baby's going to come back looking for answers, so I'll be here while you're dead. It's, a, it's just like the bride in Kill Bill. It's like, if you're still sore about it 20 years from now. I'll be waiting for Dude, you. Again, I love that there was. They should have done that movie. They still could. I was I gonna know, say, I'd love to imagine. You know, they have their camera crew there, and they're shooting. The, you know, these shots very still, very serene. Gunshot rattles out from bad guy because he wants that damn spider for bad reasons. Bringing the other camera guys, <laughs> and they're doing these punch <laughs> doing yeah. the handheld. So well, what happened here, man? I it, that caught me very off guard, and then I felt even more confused. For the next hour and 20 minutes where that was not present at well, all. Well, <laughs> it, it was present. And it, I, I noticed it here. And I was like, wait, this is 1973. At first, I thought, oh, they're just doing the style of cinema or c uh, cinematography that would have been popular in like the early 2000s, which was like the 24 style like punch ins. And I'm like, God, I hope they ditched that very quickly because it's very nauseating. There's a reason why we moved away from that. Thank God they did. But my point earlier was that Carrie Bechet is a good actor. And it's actually hard. It actually is fucking hard to make a good actor look this bad on screen. Yeah. She looked horrible. Bad. No, I don't mean physically looked. I mean like no, no, yeah. how Perform. she her came performance. her performance was so bad in this 
That it's great that she's good because this is the only thing I've ever seen her, and I was like, oh, this woman. Does she's going to have a future in this. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't yeah. give up your day. No, so, I, I, I want clear. They don't say the line. I, 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 maybe the biggest fault. I think movie. how. I mean, first off, how ADR that was in the trailer. Yeah, my mother was killed in the rainforest. But dude, like, I was yeah. like, that's not really in the movie. I felt really bad for her too, Nick. I know what you mean. It but was, back it, to your point, it was a Just good. Done, done it dirty. was a good player on a bad team. You're like, oh, they need to get that person out of there. Back to your point, Sam. Of like, this is this is delivering on everything that trailer did. I'm just thinking yep. being shoehorned in and ADR didn't fucking terrible. There it is. Whatever. Anyways, though, so yeah, mom's there. She has a contraction, but she can't wait. She got to find this spot. You're like, what a shitty Stop. mom. You deserve to die out here. Uh, so we follow Ezekiel back to the camp where he goes through and starts taking his little spy photos of all the stuff. And then immediately the woman shows, I got the I got spider. It. And everybody's like, yeah, we got one. Caca, caca. There's that, there's that. And she, I heard you all laugh. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. I heard y'all laugh. It was very jarring. Yeah. It was jarring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he, she's like, why? And he's like, I need the fucking spider. I've been searching for it for years. And at this point, she won't give it up. But again, to Tim's point, we just found it. Yeah. Like, we, we know where it. they are. You're pregnant. You got enough time to sleep in the camp another night, come out in the next morning, get these spiders that do drop rainfall. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you'll get them. We'll find another one. Yeah, By exactly. the way, not the smallest spider. No. no maybe the biggest size one, of a, actually. <laughs> it's backside size of a and golf ball. red. And, and it's I love, so and that, that, bad looking. And again, CG. I love it's the, the capture and finding all happens off screen. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what a ridiculous. Why do yeah. we follow this guy you had, to take photos of the book? Like, I could already kind of tell this guy's a dirtbag totally. douchebag. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. Uh, and maybe if I didn't know that, it would have been even cooler for her to him to shoot everybody. It's one of those things where this goes by at such a fast clip that I start getting hopeful. I'm like, oh, if they just wanted to get the setup done because we're gonna get so many so many awesome action sequences in this movie you get that a lot we of just Dakota Johnson have to in a red get coat. to them. We gotta get to them. Dakota Johnson in a red coat. Uh, mom gets blown away, right? She gets shot. Uh, but and as soon as that happens, you hear the the spider people in the trees. The I forgot. God, they talked about bad. that earlier. They talked about the aranias, yeah, and go, she yeah. was like, the the aranias. I yeah, believe like, in science. There aren't these like crazy mystical people in these jungles that are like super fast and have magical powers. I believe in reality and science. That's why I'm here for the spider and his peptides andy <laughs> how, how'd you feel about these guys um what does that mean what does that word mean by the way spider, spider. spider. uh i was spider. i was very confused by their look Later. i didn't like they cut away from them quickly enough to where you couldn't get a good glimpse of like what they actually were wearing and stuff their they, vines looked cool because it looked like spider-man like, like, oh, okay. like vines around their arms or whatever and i think the thing that i was most confused by tim was the main dude who ends up rescuing Carrie and taking her to their little mystical lake or whatever. Spider water, yeah. Um, and uh, spider water, spider water. <laughs> and the, mo like, not even an attempt at covering up the ADR. There's a lot of moments in movies, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of moments where you see the back of somebody's head, you see their mouth doesn't match up, whatever. This is just like a close-up on the dude. It may have just been a close-up of his mouth. And the words that he's saying do not match up. It, it looked anywhere like close. it looked like when they dub over like a foreign film. Yeah, yep. I, honestly, it's just not working. Never seen a movie like not give a fuck. About, just, <laughs> like literally, like not. We're not trying at all. And it's not it. even just that guy. Later on in the movie, when she comes back to Ezekiel, mystical Ezekiel. dude. What? Oh the, oh, the mystical guy. When she comes back later with mystical dude, and she's they're walking. There's a scene of Dakota oh, yeah. Johnson oh, flapping, yeah. and she's not saying. But there's like saying. literally fifty percent of Ezekiel's lines. Like when he's there. Camera on his face, and he's not saying what he's saying. Bless God bless and the editors. I got to so different. Yeah, I yeah. got. I got to imagine the editors just like fucking just render it, bro. Get. Let, I want to get out of Should here. Should I match you know? the room tone? No, no, absolutely. I not. don't give a shit. We that recorded we know. on five different microphones in three different studios. One of them was in my mom's garage. Like they just turn your phone on, turn your phone on, and say. Well, I don't know <laughs> uh, and again, again, I want to fuck. <laughs> I don't even remember the accent. Do it. Just do, do it. it. <laughs> I want to call attention to you again. This this scene. This didn't work. And later, this guy. His name is Jose. Jose Maria Yaspic was in. He was one of the leads in Narcos Mexico, and he is absolutely. This is the cool. mystic. That's dude. the mystic guy's okay. name. Santiago is his character name in this. Santiago, he is. Yeah. He carries that show for a number of episodes. He plays a character named Amato, and he is so fucking good in it that it. I was like, that can't be the same guy. It can't be. It's. It's like they must have not liked their actors in this because they're like, we want everyone to not have a career after this. This is how bad these scenes are with these actors. Everyone, I mean, I wish Hollywood worked. I don't wish that, actually. That'd be really rude. I don't think Hollywood works that way. I don't think anybody's going to look at this film. Of, I'm like, being totally okay, facetious. Okay, of course not. But well, earlier, but like, it's oh, just, the, just, a black spot. Who fucking cares? That Julia Sweeney was, right, uh, uh, nailed Sydney. that. Huh? Sydney Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney was just. <laughs> Julia, Julia Sweeney is a different vibe. Who is that? I don't know who that is. <laughs> SNL, I think, right? Oh, yeah. I'll bring her up. You'll okay, okay. Her Anyways, <laughs> Sydney Sweeney, right? Oh, a black mark on her. She was just in that terrible rom-com nobody liked, but there was terrible. a shower scene or whatever. Hey, I, I just see what the Twitter says. 
I'm not gonna go see no, it. No, that, right? that was that was it was well received and it made a lot they, of money. They did okay. the fucking thing and Nathan Fielder made fun. Yeah, of but I'm talking about the guy in like it's Pat. <laughs> I'm talking about like in John Carter of Mars, how that guy's career, I'm blanking on the actor's name, had, you know, that that was like the first sort of, funny, funny lady. of funny. you know, fatal blow to the career. And then he was Gambit. And that was even worse uh, for his yeah. career. You know, like God, these things ha so do funny. happen. All right. That is actually fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded totally so natural. Different. Like, wait, I know it isn't right. Yeah, it's a sweetie. It's not sweetie. Not right. Yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is like, it's not that Hollywood goes, oh, they were bad in that bad movie. It's that like. Because these movies don't hit in the way they should, they aren't elevated to like the culture. Like, oh, that's an it actor. We need that person because they sure. were in that really good popular movie. It's and it's just look, a lot of good actors in a bad movie. Unfortunately, for, for clarity's her name sake, was Julia, the, her act, her character name. Thank you. For, and that's just what just for clarity's sake, in case anyone was confused about that, I don't actually think that the the filmmakers are working against okay. their actors. Be okay. I do think that that this is just indicative of like I've seen all these actors be great in other films and other other properties. That it's just sad they didn't get a chance to shine here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, jeez, I thought we'd go faster. Uh, so she shot, and then the spider people show up, and they probably chase off Ezekiel, and then they drag her back to the mystical pond, and they put her in the little cave po pool, and they're like, yo, you're gonna die. Spider bite her. And the spider does. And like, you know what I mean? And sudden, there's a lot of shit happening here. There's a woo. And then she gives... Looking like a Cartoon Network character. She gives birth uh, to the baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Cassie. And I thought we were going to call it Cassie. Instead, we get like the little hand. And, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Ah, she didn't touch her baby. Put her back in the so milk. Important. Um, but they had the little, the little spider bite on the chest, I guess, like near the neck area. I guess that's where you want to get bitten. That's where your heart is? I thought I was going to save her or the mom, too, but I uh, guess they tried. Remember, we knew that from the trailer that her mom was killed in the Amazon. <laughs> <seven spiders. laughs> yeah. uh, anyways, though, she's a baby, and that's fucking great. And the guy's like, listen, we'll tell her. One day she'll show back up when she's a wanted woman driving a car with no plates mm -hmm. and le abandoning three teenage girls for a week. Here's the thing, man. Like The the, re the cult classicness of all this shit, I think, that one day will come, is when you start actually breaking down the absurd, when you strip away the superhero stuff, when you, strip away, when you just talk about the actual plot and character development of these these people, these things, these yeah. elements, yeah. it's fucking hilarious. This is just a film about an unnecessary kidnapping in way too many vehicles that are just overused in the most bizarre ways possible. Why did the girls get, go to the hospital? It's just the, I'm so, so mad it's so fucking weird. Hey, why did you get in the fucking car to go to the hospital for Leave this? Leave them there. What, like, what's they the, already, could, they already were proven they couldn't be trusted because they would throw popcorn. It's just a series of choices <laughs> of like, what's the most bizarre thing Here's my do? thing is, I and you said this earlier, so I, just to j piggyback off of it, I don't see this being a cult classic as you, because you were you said, can they still exist? I think in the world we live in where we are inundated with content every second, you just can't. Like, I just don't see there being screeners for this like there were for The Room or Troll 2 yeah. or even So Bad It's Good, Hilarious, Wet Hot American Summer, right, that you didn't get, or Mall Rats that you don't get the first time you see it, but the more you watch it, Big Lebowski. Mm. I just feel like that's a commitment because you bought the DVD. You you oh, you did you went oh. to the film or whatever. You had mm. nothing else to do with your friends. Where now See, it's like there's fucking three thousand other things to do. Why would you waste your time? I think it's hard that? to give it grace as well because this is a movie in a genre that people really want to care and have like good experiences with. Because like for the most part, there have been a lot of I think really good superhero movies, and like people hold these near and dear to their hearts. So when something comes out here and like almost insults the like just you as a viewer for watching it like it if this were like if this didn't take place in a marvel universe if this wasn't marvel characters it was just random superhero movie that debuted on netflix that got funded by whatever and it's no name people all created all original content i think maybe but the fact that it's like a marvel thing trying to do that we also have like venom 1 and venom 2 that are arguably cold classics where you see people doing like the oh you know uh, Venom's so hot, like I'm gonna go watch the Venom movie, like or Morbius getting rescreened <laughs> in theaters because people were talking about it on the internet. Like yeah. shit like I can't believe that that still happened. I, I don't know if I, I I don't know if people like, yeah, have a, a random screener at an Alamo draft house for this in the future, but who knows? I think that they will. And like I think that it doesn't exist the same anymore, but I See? think that this is gonna hit in that type of level that it's not gonna be the room, but I do think that enough people are going to bite on what makes this at this moment in time where superhero movies are at. It's like this one's different. I, I agree with Tim. I think it's I think this movie has something that's so bad about it that it's going to be one of those things where there are gonna be people ironically championing it 
and that's going to turn into an unironic champion as they as it moves forward. Someone's going they're going to find it's just a morbid fascination with stuff like this that I think Michael I could Morbius. see this to 10 years from now people being like it's like just watching it like you would watch uh not the room uh what's the one with uh Tim Curry where he doesn't like it anymore uh, Rocky, Horror Rocky Horror Picture Show where it's that weird and fucked up that people go eh, we're just going to we're in for it. And again, I think, I mean, whatever. We, we we're spinning our wheels in right, cinema yeah. right now, but I think yeah. Rocky Horror Picture Show was something nobody had ever seen before that way, right? Yeah, but it's arguably the weirdest fucking worst thing that's ever been put on cinema. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think people think it's good. I think people watch it because it's so crazy that yeah, they're yeah, like, okay, this is okay, fascinating. Okay, fair Putting a button on this from like my perspective on it, it's like I totally Put understand this is, it, the, the cult classic and what that means. It's not the same. I do think that when we're talking about superhero movies, I think that this one is going to have a place in how bad it is and what like, the timing and what it means to be this bad differently than a thing like Morbius yeah. or uh, like half the DCU or many of the other Sony projects. Let's just take the word classic out of it. It'll be it'll have a cult following years from now. Yeah. We'll just put it that fair, way. Fair. I'll be one saying save the Dakota verse. Uh, we jumped to 2003. It's New York. You mess with one of us. You mess with all Great, of us. For the us. rest of this, I'd like you just to do this. <laughs> Every time the camera zoomed in on yeah, something. I, I couldn't keep up. Um, we meet up with Cassie and Ben, two ambulance paramedics. Uh, they're driving through the streets of New York, and it's crazy, y'all. Some will say New York's getting crazier every day or whatever the fuck he says for no reason. Yeah, that five times. Um, they're driving. They got a guy ODing in the back. He's doing chest compressions and a lot of just flat fucking dialogue here. Uh, do you want to switch with me? I wouldn't want him going room temperature on my watch. Like, what the fuck? What? This is the line read? This is what we did here? Bad writing <laughs> delivered poorly and filmed horribly. And it's, so it's like there's... I could almost sing... I, I, I would love to go back and watch this and see if those zooms were done practically or digitally. Because I'm wondering if they just want, if they, you know, you could like you. scale it up a little they bit look, to make it look like look that. Digital. They did look a little bit just to give you a little bit more sense of energy in this because the performance was so non-existent. fucking flat. I'm so happy you brought the word energy. I, there, the energy of this scene is just so off that it all the elements together just create this thing that is it's off putting. I didn't it's, know what they wanted me to feel. Exactly, hundred <laughs> percent. Like you're saying things that are supposed to make me laugh. You're presenting this as if it's a fucking chase scene. Like it's so bizarre. It was, but it's also was, this is like the first thing that I laughed because like this ambulance is going like. 38 miles an hour. <laughs> like, it's not really screaming it's down. It's because New York's so hard to drive in. You know it's what I mean? It's not tough. really screaming down the streets, but they're trying to fucking make this scene super erratic. <laughs> like, let's not forget her one touchstone to, oh gosh, I don't have, I don't have the character's name, uh, is that she flips her Maddie. off. Maddie. Maddie. She was like, oh no, you flip me off. I was like, that's the only touchstone you have to this person? The, the you saved her like... <laughs> The amount of characters in this fucking movie that just don't so, need to be here. Like, we just watched this movie. Andy, who are any of the girls? Oh, man. Anya. Uh, I okay. know it was the Mexican yeah. girl because, because it's, it reminded me of Aranya. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, like, I mean, they're superheroes. Like, like who oh, are they? Oh, oh, you don't need yeah. to know. You're never told. Ooh. You just never find, Like, we don't get enough of them in this. And we see that they do become spider people I, at some point. I know Sydney Sweeney is spider woman. Mm-hmm. But even but then, I didn't know she had like plasma powers. Those added a lot. She had like laser. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Wait for Madam Web too. Don't worry about <laughs> oh, it. Shit. Because we never Excited. even got that. I was like, are we gonna get like when she sees the future, like them getting their powers? No. No. Cool. Whatever. Oh, uh, that Maddie girl had the had the claws. Yeah, like the, the, the mandibles. Iron, no, what, what are they? Iron legs, legs, legs. Mandibles. Did you Mandib- say? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I made even to the names of the characters. I had to make a point at the end where I was like, "All right, I gotta wait for them to say their names again." I mean, I have IMDb open now, but like yeah. at the time, I was I was leaning into uh, uh, Sydney Sweeney, yellow shirt, and then the skater. <laughs> That's what I was going to do till I was like, "All right, Maddie, I got Maddie, got that," and then Anya, all right, I got that, and then Sydney Sweeney. All I need to know. Um. Anyways, yeah. So they almost run her over. She flips them off. They're driving through. It's crazy. Yada yada yada. But guess what? They get to the hospital. Uh, and then this little kid tries to give, well, not even just some little kid, the stepbrother of Sydney Sweetie tries to give a picture he drew in the two seconds of them being there. Time, by the way, makes no fucking sense in this movie. We'll get to all that later. Oh, yeah. G- tries to give him a, her a picture. And she's like, oh, oh, what? I don't know what. I don't what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, just take it. And I would have. It. it was look, no joke. I would have. I can barely. I would have. Fo- I can barely fold it. It's like cardboard. I would have laughed. What these- the fuck? Who no. wrote this? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I would have laughed at these lines if they were in a good movie. Legitimately, like I think there's some good moments I, where she's like, she's like, well, um, I don't know what to. And Adam Scott's like, just take the fucking paper. Like Adam Scott's like, kind of getting mad at her, and he's got good comedy timing. And then that line of, I can't even fold it. 
if a random character said that in a Marvel movie, I would have liked it because it would have been in a package that I am overall enjoying more. But uh, that, this is what I was mentioning at the beginning of the show. There's some okay moments of comedy that just don't hit because I'm not enjoying anything else that's happening. And I'm like, wow, that that sucks. You know, it makes I you feel bad at this moment. I thought it, yeah. I thought it was funny but I, no, because it was bad. Because oh, yeah, I was really? gonna say, oh, yeah. not it was good, so right? funny to me because it, of how bad it was. It reminds me of like a movie where like an alien's trying to be a human, and they just yeah. don't understand how interpersonal relations work, right? Well, that, that's well, the see, you have to understand. She didn't have a mother and grew up in foster care, right. so she can't do a photo. That, that's the she funniest thing about the plot of this movie. Basic Take, strip empathy the works. superhero stuff. I was trying to say this earlier. Strip the superhero stuff out of this. The plot of this movie is just, hey, this woman didn't have a mom and has resentment towards that, so she fucking hates and can't understand the concept of family. She won't connect so with anybody. So much. That she is a fucking weird alien that I understand and that, that that people might be able to relate to that. Not with how horrible they make this woman. She goes yeah. so far to be mean to everyone she possibly can. And it's her fucking superhero origin story is her then getting this family of teens? They're mine. It's, it is so well, bizarre. if we can it's... pump the brakes for a second, they all do have family. <laughs> but, like, they, but then they have that moment, they break down how they do have families, but they kind of don't. But all yeah, their families yeah. hate them or whatever. Yeah, or are yeah. gone. Holy shit. No, I, I, I do just want to reiterate that like, if, the, if Paul Rudd was in a Marvel movie and a kid gave him a drawing and he was like, what do I do with this? And someone said, Fold it up, up and put it in your pocket. pocket. And he was like, I can't even fold this. Made of cardboard. That would have been a funny moment. But Paul Rowe would have done it in an endearing way. Of course. Right? And no, 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 no. I'm not saying yeah. that their deliveries were good. Th I just mean, like, yeah. there are some moments of hope in a Andy very dreary world. that a table read, this would have killed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, again, it was supposed to obviously, you know, exemplify her faults, like the big fault of hers as a character. But it just ends up you not liking her, which yep. is you can do that a couple times in your movie, right? You can have a couple moments where your character acts like such a fucking abrasive asshole that you're like, okay, I see, you. I see you've got space to to improve as a character. That's that's going to be your arc. But in moments like this, and then how awkward she is around these people that she clearly probably Johnson. knows at the fucking party. Like it's not her first time meeting this guy that she clearly dated, right? Ben, they had a history, right? Yeah. She must know his fucking sister. How awkward up. could she possibly be at the in this moment? It well, just see, makes you know. not I think, like he, the character. I think they were just hooking up. I don't think it I think it was a work But he's his partner, right? They're partners. Yeah. They're like mm -hmm. they go into like these these high stress situations together. And this is like it's like a firefighter family. Like Mike Epps is like the chief. Mike like, Epps, oh, fucking Epps. Oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> by, by the way, when he got there, I was like, this movie's about to get fucking great. But I saw Mike they Epps. They never let him great. go. No. They never let him anyway. go. Full let him fly. <laughs> anyways, yeah, like we said, oh, anyways, uh, she doesn't know what to do with the thing. Then we go back to the ambulance station. Uh, they're hanging out there and they're eating Chinese food because there's just a couple of New Yorkers. Hey, yo, why do we get a slice? Hey, yo, uh. <laughs> That's a big out over here. Queens, Queens, <laughs> Queens. <laughs> uh, while eating uh, there, that's when. Uh, they open the fortune cookie. She has no fortune. Foreshadowing that she can make whatever she wants. At this you moment, will. I'm like, this is where Ben Parker is 100% going to get there with great power, great responsibility. Oh, and like, and like, that would have been so stupid. It's so on the nose. It's so dumb. And like, I can't believe they're fucking doing this. And I can't believe they found an even worse way to yeah. do it later in the movie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Ben doesn't get that, but he does get to reveal that he's seeing somebody and it's pretty serious. He won't tell her her name, which is a weird thing to do. Why don't you just say the even, name? Even if you're hooking up with, oh it's, oh, it's serious. You won't tell me her name? That's a weird fucking read on not telling your friend, colleague, partner for sure. Lover, I don't know, you know, okay. That's a weird thing. Yeah, again, it, it doesn't. Part-time lover. You're, you're totally right. It doesn't serve anybody in this moment. And, like... It should have just never been brought up at that, that. That shouldn't have been a like, what's her name? That shouldn't have been the thing at all. It just, I'm seeing something a little serious, and you know, ah, uh, it's May. That's a, it's really, really serious. And like, oh, okay, gotcha. Her name's May. She works at this place called Feast. <laughs> like, go through all the things. <sighs> Uh, she's excited to be an ant one day. She'll be sad when I get shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from there, you know, it's time to clock out of work. Uh, she goes home and has a great apartment in New York. Opens the fridge and like great she's place. gonna get a beer. No, she gets milk. That's interesting. Opens the window, pours a bowl of milk for the kitty cat. A stray's got to stick together. Oh my god, it was awesome. Yeah, okay. for, 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 that is a Catwoman Halle Berry yeah. ass yeah, line, dude. Hundred percent. For one second, and I was like. They're not gonna do this. I thought she was gonna open the window and a spider was gonna crawl through. <laughs> yeah. For the milk, they can't know about Catwoman. I, I think this movie has a lot of similarities. With Very Catwoman similar to me. Not quite as batshit crazy as, as I Catwoman. Think, well, was. I, I, I think know, I think they're really really bad for a lot of different reasons. But 
Catwoman, I never really felt like was... Catwoman to me felt bad because it was just like a bad premise at the start and having like just bad dialogue and everything. This movie just felt so disconnected from scene to scene or from line read to line read where, again, it felt like the person who wrote that line had different intentions for what the scene was going to be and the person who wrote the next line had completely different intentions. So it felt like all of the reshoots really ruined that. I'm sure there were reshoots as well as, as well as there were in, in Catwoman back in the day, but it just feels like nowadays we hear so much about reshoots. We hear so much about uh, movies being in development hell and how many times things have to go through rewrites. This movie felt like like the epitome of that. You know what I mean? I just don't think there was any, there at any moment was anything close to a good movie anywhere here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. totally. Fair. Uh, the next day at work, they go to a routine call on the bridge where a car's overturned. Dakota Johnson jumps in there and it's like, I'll get this guy out. Adam Scott's like, I'm going to get him out too. She's like, I'm going to cut your thing. He's going to pull you out. That's my friend, Ben. She goes, oh, the guy goes, okay. And they cut him out and they pull him out. Do they not think about the risk of it hanging over? Like when you're in, when you're in you know, NYM FD. dick, you know, you're just out there just doing it. You arrive there and you look at the car hanging yeah, halfway cut, off of a broken thing. You go, we got to assess this. I don't know if I can go in there to save this dude. Mm -hmm. Let's make a couple jokes first. Very, very odd, dude. Like this is like this just felt like as if we all showed up to a to a wreck and like yeah. let's just yeah, fucking dude. try to help this guy. Cut it. They hey. hold the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> like, this was one of the first moments of the movie. Uh, not the first though, because there was the the out of nowhere shooting. Um, but it, the level of violence from zero to 60 that just happens is so funny. Like them getting this guy down, he like kind of falls and then the fucking car with Dakota Johnson in it just falls off the cliff. The door closes and it hits the water so fast. Like we don't even have time to comprehend what just happened before she is. What in, happened here? She's right? in the Please web. Explain to me. So this is unlocked her spider abilities. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you are asking about this. As you may or may not recall, even though I just recapped it, she was born into spider water, mm -hmm. and she has thus returned to spider water. Uh -huh. So once she has, water. she hits her head, which is very similar from everything I've ever read about giving, <laughs> giving birth to. You know, you have head mm -hmm. trauma both ways. Sometimes yep. kids get those cone heads. You got know, to the vagina. You squeeze them she back. hits it, cracks it, sees the web in the web. She's webbed. She's in the water. She's connected back to that Amazonian, I'm sorry, Peruvian Amazonian <laughs> pond. You know? What is it about the water in New York? <laughs> like, why is it this water? Oh, that's why the bagels and pizza are so good, everybody says. Oh, yeah, yeah, so the there, water. she's there, they and she can them. see it, and you can start hearing things that you don't know, but you're like, oh, these are going to come up later in the movie, and they come up later in the movie, you know what I mean? But she sees some things and does some things, and you're like, a balloon pops. There's an S that I thought was like Spider-Verse S that was like, because it looks like the S from the Spider-Man cover. I was like, oh, that's fucking cool shit. Can I, can I stop you? And very much like this movie, just kind of like, very out of order. Jump around the show. Because I need to tell Kevin. Everybody's in the web. Kevin, are you listening to me? I'm right here, man. I need you to know that this scene of her in the fucking water just includes 3D sound effects of just random lines. We've seen it before, like Loki, you know, that they go through in the timeline. You hear all these classic lines from mm -hmm. Marvel movies or whatever. They just do that. But instead, it's Dakota Johnson awkwardly floating in the water with way too many things that look like spider webs. So like broken glass yeah. and like mm -hmm. things like that. And they start going through all these lines that are just later in the movie. So we don't fucking know. We so quickly are like, the rewatch it's like, oh, but it's like we know these lines are gonna be later in the movie, but that doesn't make this interesting at all. It's just fucking <laughs> weird. And then we start seeing these random things like a balloon pop or whatever, and we see this giant S fall, and we're like, what could it be? Kevin, I'm gonna reveal to you right now that what the S is is the S of a giant Pepsi Cola logo that the Neon final time. battle takes place on. And now in that warehouse, Kevin, what the, in the Pepsi Cola warehouse, what do you think they store and ship? <laughs> Pepsi Colas. What no, they'd be fireworks. fireworks. <laughs> 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 oh, so the final that makes fight more scene sense. is all of them trying to, they're fighting. They're not even fighting. No, There's no final fight scene. And that's why, as, <laughs> Tim, like, look, audio he, listeners, he sorry, you're going to have to experience this visually, but I was laughing because it was just characters doing. Duck! Like, <laughs> it's that a web telling them because she can kind of see the future a little bit. Telling them, Remember, she's mastered her powers at this point. She, yeah, oh, she's yeah, Doctor right. Stranging it. You're right, you're right. She's like, like, run, three steps, duck. And as that's happening, fireworks are just going off That's everywhere. what beats the sp evil Spider-Man. And it, the, uh, like, a thing fucking hits and eventually the, the S from the Pepsi logo. Final After Destination so style. much Pepsi in this goddamn movie just fucking falls and crushes this guy. And it was like, Pepsi kills the bad guy. I just like, I can't believe the choices they made. It would have reminded me of, it reminded me of of like some of the best shows of all time breaking bad where they start off each season 
shown an image and you're yeah. like, what's yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, it was good. And then at the, you find out, like, oh shit, there, the little pink bear floating yeah, in the water. Oh sad. my god, the lily of the valley. Isn't it oh my sad god. sad that that's what they were trying to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, you should have known better. You were trying. Instead, so though. Oh shit, Greg's getting uh -oh. a Coke. Uh -oh. um, ladies and gentlemen, oh. also, I almost brought like, you I just a want to say, in terms of like, fuck you guys, <laughs> fuck you, Sony, for. Hover. Thinking what you got going on and, and like even trying to like align with the wins you have with Spider Verse. Like leave Spider Verse the fuck alone. Oh my god, get a close up of Andy it's trying to full. Andy oh. wants to drink this Coke, but he wants to drink it without touching it. Yeah, I want to take a little swig. Do you just want to coke your own? I'll full. get you a little cup. Let me get you a little cup. Oh my lord. Let me get you a little Andy, cup. What the fuck? Well, it's because I, I don't I don't it's think too he's full. Get, he's not I need to be able to tilt it more. He's well, not gonna get so then why did you just <laughs> I don't know how to do it right. <laughs> like it's not that way. <laughs> but a lot of ways to do it. That wasn't the one I would have picked. This movie starts with the new Paramount, uh, not Paramount, Sony Pictures, Columbia Pictures. Um, the Hundred Years intro and like goes through all the. Like, and I didn't the, see that comment, so I thought it was Spider Versey kind of thing. I was like, oh. Well, well, that's the thing is like I've seen this on online and it's a very cool intro and like shout out to them, Hundred Years, it's awesome and like they did a good job. They sp spliced in some Spider Verse glitch shit. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? No, no, no. You don't get to you didn't do get that. that. You, do you didn't not earn know. that. Nick's going to pour you a little Nick's Nick's gonna, up here. Nick's going to pour me a little bit of soda. That's all right. Thank man. you. Come on now. Don't be, don't be harsh in my mellow. <laughs> you're, you're wheezing the juice. <laughs> um, Man, we're going to be here for three hours, aren't we? I really <laughs> thought, I was like, oh, we'll be done in an hour. I, I forgot the bad ones take even longer. Talk about, man. The bad ones take even longer. Ah! Uh, no, I, where would I leave off? I've grinded a halt on what I said. We never either. talked about Ezekiel. I'm not there yet because it okay. hasn't happened yet. That's right. Adam Scott resuscitates her on the banks of the river. I'm sorry. I don't know New York rivers. They're underneath the bridge. Mm -hmm. Adam Scott jumped in, got her out, got her up there, and is just all alone. They mm -hmm. they put in a, a helicopter noise so we know they're not alone. Eventually, he's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, hey, and they make a couple jokes. And then she, he brings her up uh, there, and then he does her oxygen and all that jazz a little in the light. And then he's like, you need to see a doctor. Your oxygen is low. It's gone up to 89. That's super cool. And then whoop, we rewind. And she's like, what? And then all, and it's 89. He's like, it is 89. All right, you can go about your yeah. business. See you later. So she's doing like weird flashbacky stuff. But the more important thing I want to point out, we talked about it before, is how a beard on a man is such a cheat code. Yeah. Right? That's why we like, like we beards. Put, exactly. we, we, we grow out our facial hair to hide imperfections, you... to hide my double chin, more importantly. And, like, I think of Adam Scott in Severance. I always thought of Adam Scott as a very, very handsome dude. He's not bad looking. When I was, when I was watching Boy Meets World as a kid, I was like, man, this kid, I want to be this dude growing, when I grow up. And then in Severance being like, man... I'm not really feeling it. I'm not feeling like the attraction right here with Adam Scott. Yeah. This movie with the beard and the hair, this dude is hot. Adam Scott, great job. Scott. He has that yeah. hair that's so Scott. thick that it comes out like two inches this way yeah. and then goes yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. And it, 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 I had a moment here and I wasn't going to bring it up, but because we're all in the circle of trust. Yeah. I'm sitting next to Tim and I just think to myself, throw out your hair, Tim. You could have that level of hair. That, that volume hair? of hair. My hair right now is hella long. Look dude. at how bad. beautiful it is. Every like every it. like three, four months, I send Gia a picture of Kurt Russell with a big, the big mullet. <laughs> and I, I want y'all to know he's not lying. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, let him go. But anyway, it's not a bit. <laughs> anyway, Adam Scott here with the wet hair. Great look. Look good. Uh so then we go. The Metropolitan Museum of Opera. That's not real, but they're at an opera house or whatever, right? God, he had good hair. There we he go. Should, I mean, if they were going to do uh, back in the day, if they were going to do Twilight, he should have been at. Can we bring it up again? Do you know who that is, Greg? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I can do never you know who say. That is, oh, Nick. Uh, on the left. On the left, Chris Farley. Ethan Suckley. The From Mall Rats. Oh yeah, no, I didn't know yeah. yeah. That was the only thing he ever did. That makes sense. Wow. Uh, now we go to some opera thing. We see Ezekiel walking in. He's a little bit older. He's a little bit wiser. He walks into this opera house. He goes up. I and like. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Obviously not. I'm not single, and I never will be again. Uh -huh. Right? Unless the angel of death comes to visit me, and I hope he doesn't, because I'll fight his ass off. All right. Yeah. But we it, saw you with the hot pepper. <laughs> <laughs> never in a million years would I be like, I'm single, and I'm gonna pick somebody up at the opera. Best that was his month. fucking move, and I thought opera had assigned seating, but whatever. He shows up. Sits down next to this lady. She immediately makes eyes. He does this whole thing with the program, right? Real cute, real whatever. Like you do at a bar with a menu. You got something to say? I just want to say this scene like so quickly goes from like whatever you're describing right now to them essentially looking up. But like, I don't know if I've ever seen a scene that 
has less chemistry, not because I'm like, oh, those these these two people don't have chemistry. Because like later we see them, and I'm like, ah, whatever, it's fine. This scene though, I was like, I I didn't know I what didn't I was supposed. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what are, is he flirting with her? Like, what is for happening? me? It was when he sat down and did the whole like negging of like, hey, you want the program? Because he does like, oh, couldn't get yeah, it fast yeah. enough. You know what I mean? She's like, oh, I really love enough as a woman in power. There's nothing I love than a fucking man sitting down and <laughs> fucking with me. But like to your point about like the opera and like not it, it just everything about how they said they only went to the opera to set up the scene. Yeah, but. The scene was supposed to be, oh, he's flirting with a woman, and it didn't feel that way at all. So why I, are we doing it again? Here? Like I understand she's she's supposed to. I guess she's a highfalutin NSA person. I still think she could have gone and gotten a drink at the bar across the street that you scope that she does because yeah. she's got an alcohol problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There, there's a different way to do this. <laughs> we're gonna get her spin off of it yeah. <laughs> rather than we're gonna. He's addicted to opera. <laughs> I, do. Yeah, exactly. I, I know she goes to the opera <laughs> begging for love, so I'll go there and hit it off with her. I want to give a shout out to Jill Hennessy, by the way, who is this, the actress that plays this character, who is a DA on Law and Order for a long time. She's oh, one of the, yeah, she's awesome. one of the DAs. Uh, of course, and then it, he takes her back to his place, and she makes all these comments of like, oh, nice part. I'm like, oh, so they, you didn't know each other. Okay, fucking spider terrarium in the center Amazing of Amazing apartment apartment with the, yeah, weirdo, but, yo, but dope is fuck, man. I tell you what, if you, if you go to someone's penthouse, and they got a spider terrarium. In, as a centerpiece? You're just, a just leave. <laughs> just leave it's the place. It's weird that she was never like, who's this? 29 year old girl in these computers all the time all the time <laughs> don't, worry don't worry about her don't like, worry about her like it was so bad that at some point <laughs> i thought she i thought the happened. <laughs> where did find her boy. where did like this is like the worst internship she ever took right <laughs> like i at one point i thought the camera was gonna like pan down and she was gonna be chained to that desk <laughs> yeah right because why else would you she be helping slept. this madman? <laughs> also, how does he get his money? Does he just poison people and take their well, 401k? He, theoretically, he has the superpower now, right? So he's just a, uh, he robs shit. Okay. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Kills people, blackmail, assassinates, was, you know. I, don't know. I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking, for, yeah, how, how how do you have this much money? How are you like well, avoiding I mean, you, the IRS and, and taxes and, and people uh, hunting you down? And also, because theor- presumably this isn't the first time you've done crime. You've probably like killed, well, he people. killed a pregnant oh, yeah, woman yeah. earlier. You've killed a lot of people in the past. Yeah. Right. But like, even since then, like you've been doing a lot of mess up stuff, stuff since then. And how did this woman apply on indeed.com or LinkedIn? Like how the fuck did she get this job? Mm-hmm. Why, is, why does he have a girl in the chair? It, it's just like the, so many odd choices. He probably dude. used his peptides on her. Uh-huh. Uh, anyways, though, <laughs> much like a black That's widow in reverse, he hooks up with this lady. Right. And then has a nightmare. And of course the nightmare is, the future we would say because he's got gray hair all gray by the way he's got lots of time to figure this out still all gray hair uh and it is yeah. all the spider girls showing up to just to fucking kick his ass and murder him Mur- murder murder him like not just oh uh, kind of kill him kind of subdue this motherfucker is dead dead why and i and they i just appreciate the movie never even we i don't need another justifications for why they murdered him they, I, not not like you're gonna kill me and like why would we kill you because i did x just because I'm a, see, I'm a bad guy, sure, but like they brutally murdered this guy. <laughs> it, I'm not it's doubting weird. you guys, yeah, but I it didn't come off that way to me. It came off the way that they were like they attacked him to like whatever. I didn't I didn't get that they were like we're assassinating this guy, but I could but be wrong. They did <laughs> no, no, they did, but they did because he fought back and because he's a Spider Man and they had no choice, right? To me, it just got, it came off that it was like. I don't think that they were like the three of them are going to get together and murder this fucking guy. Well, one thing when I thought like, we got to go take party him to go rewatch it. I urge you to rock. I mean, they, I, he go, they all do the stand down as he goes out the window and there's no remorse in there. There's no like when I well, accidentally, I fucking ham it up. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I get out of the camera. I get out of the car and I'm like, grandma, I didn't see you. You know what I mean? <laughs> he backed into me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> You're in so, my Cadillac. So I agree with you, Greg. I thought like like first off, the 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 girls don't seem a whole lot older than what they are now. 100%, 100%. But this dude looks like he's aged 70 years. And obviously this dude ages a lot slower because he's a superpower dude. But this looks like Based on how he looked in the 70s to how he looks now, not enough time has gone by for him to be fully white-haired out. Um, and also him going to his intern computer lady and being like, here are the women I'm seeing in my dreams. How, did, how do you know how these women look? I, like, I guess, technology's there now. Uh, it, this, what remember, says. remember. Like a brain You're, We're jumping ahead. By a lot, but I'll let. You. Oh, you're right. No, 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 you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, because fine. I still want to also really laugh at him getting up, waking up with this nightmare. Did you have a bad dream? 
You have, <laughs> I, I'm going to be killed or <laughs> some shit. I'm going to be murdered. <laughs> so I have to murder them first. And this woman's just lying in bed. Like, he's like, like, oh. All right. And it's not until he's like, but I heard the government has some. She's like, oh, shit, this guy might be bad. Yeah. In fucking sane. Let's but not even what, talk about the fact that why would he even, why would any of this be happening? Like, I get maybe he wanted to have sex. Maybe he, you know, even as a bad guy, he's like, this, this woman's whatever. I'm attracted to her. But then after that, like, you go to sleep? You sleep a whole fucking yeah. night I thought with her next that to you? Is, that's very funny, what actually. What the fuck are you doing? I thought the same thing. You're going to kill her. Why would you fucking wait? <laughs> she could have left. She could have gotten up in the middle of the night and fucking left. Yeah, why did she need to wait for the dream to happen yeah. again that happens every night? <laughs> he wanted her to see. I, I buy this. He wanted her to see it was a real. Buy, oh, so that way she would be like, it. you know what I mean? That is hilarious. Real quick. I was talking to Greg about this, but Nick and Eddie, I don't think you know this. So I need to at least educate you a bit. And I'm going to get some things wrong because I first read this over a decade ago at this point. But the worst thing about this movie is it's lightly based in the characters and like premise of it all is based on one of the best Spider-Man stories ever told. All right. The introduction of Ezekiel Sims, who was so fucking awesome. It's revealed there was actually a Spider-Man before Spider-Man, essentially. And this is all destiny. It introduces the concept of destiny to Spider-Man. Of It wasn't random that Peter Parker got bit. It was always planned to be in some way. And that's a delicate story to tell it could be good it could be bad yeah. there was follow-ups that were horrible um but it eventually that was in like i don't know 2002 or something like that and then there was a follow-up story of this character coming back that was spider-verse the actual creation of spider-verse as we know it now and there's this character morlin who's like this fucking like evil vampire thing that's morlin. coming down to, to hunt yeah, them um and like hunt all the spiders across the universe fucking cool what they do here is so not that at all. Mm. There, it, it's, he's Ezekiel in name alone. Like, nothing about what we know, but it was cool because, like, the, it introduced the concept of t totems. So there's the spider totem, and there's like the, the rhino totem, and the vul uh, vulture totem, and the um, scorpion totem. And, like, isn't it weird that so many of the people around you, the villains, are all these animals and whatever? Super cool, super interesting, all this shit. So they decide what matters about that story for this. Ezekiel, his name, sure. Kevin, can you please bring up Ezekiel from the comics, Ezekiel Sims? Because I need to show them an image of this guy so you sure. can understand how fucking funny it was to me to see him pop up in this scene. For the record, I am well versed. I read this. These were one. I, this was a run that was happening when I was at Mizzou. So I would go to the bookstore and read the comics and then put them back and leave because I was and, broke. I, and when I say it's one of the best ever, I mean, if you Google best Spider Man stories, like this is going to be on that list. There wow. Is. Um, so what do we notice about shoeless. him? Shoeless. White hair and shoeless. What do we notice about our boy here? He's shoeless. White hair and shoeless oh, for man. the whole fucking movie. They uh, nailed it. <laughs> oh, they really did that? Yeah, dude. And yeah. they don't even kind of explain it. Like, there Look were scenes with him walking there. around shoeless constantly. Yeah, thank you. Oh, this is perfect. I didn't see him he, on black. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's, um, the first time he was shoeless, I was like, why, why is he shoeless? And then the next time, I was like, why is he shoeless? And then by the fifth time, I kept asking myself, is, why the fuck is he shoeless? <laughs> and so they, they never make any they references never make, to why he's they shoeless. They never get up. And then when we see him in the suit, he has, he has, shoes. He has shoes. So at first I thought, oh, that's interesting. He like Maybe his talents can't go all the way through or whatever. Mm -hmm. and little, little thing. But then oh. he has the shoes in the suit, which and the suit's like thick. It's not even like it's like a little tiny suit. It's like a thick suit. I'm like, You don't weird, know if it's man. that TikTok trend, though, where they're cutting off the soles of their shoes. No, they were they were walking yeah. barefoot. Yeah, but they basically just had like a foot covering on top of their shoe. Makes sense in case anything falls on your foot. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to get they don't I mean, I think soda. it's just such a great example of just like, you know, the love and care and respect that were given to these things, right? It's like Sydney Sweeney in the interviews where she's like, I know she hangs upside down a lot, so I begged them to make me hang upside down in one of the I'm like, yeah. all right. And then that's she the does. thing too is like her like Julia Carpenter is uh, a spider woman in the comics and stuff. And in this movie, she's like not Julia Carpenter. She's Julia like Cornwall. Cornwall. And it's like Whoa. you you set up that like, oh, she has some shit with her mom and like maybe her mom's last name is Carpenter, she'll take that later, but we're never gonna get that movie. So why do that? Well, but that's not even the biggest sin of the movie. The biggest sin of the movie is that you made a, a superhero movie without any superheroes in it, but then you showed us what it could have been. This well, thank scene, God we didn't get that. Well, but it would have been more exciting than watching four people just driving a different cars for two hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it would, but I, I got I mean, I, this one scene where you see them in suits, I was like, oh, I, I would watch. I mean, that's the movie that I would have expected to get. 
when you when when you showed me the trailer with all of those because that's the only thing that's going to get people the butts and seats. Uh, and we see it twice. I, I mean, I'd watch Sydney Sweeney be fucking Spider Woman. Why wouldn't anyone? I mean, because it looked horrible. I don't know. I, I, I'm so I, happy we didn't get but, action but, in this because it was bad. But like the alternative was the movie that we got. So like, how is that? You better? Lose, lose, <laughs> lose, lose. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he starts poisoning her and is like, I hear, so I need to now you got to tell me the password and I won't kill you. And this is where you, this is where you double back to Greg Miller, right? I'll uh-huh. tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you take one thing away from the years of teachings I've given you, don't <laughs> negotiate with terrorists. No, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, do, give me your password. Make up a password, and then if he kills you, <laughs> he's <laughs> fucked. Because that's exactly what could happen. Why is this ready? Do this to me. Tell me the password. What's the password? Q Z. <laughs> One, I'd be like, hold on, let me get a pen. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it was so this long. More complicated. I was like, it was does this guy one. get to remember this? Spider's like, not going known on? for great memories. No, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but then he ends this murder with a, a really good line that was very forgettable, but it was like one of those like, oh, that's that's the line we chose to keep. I think it was like, when was, the venom will take over your body and kill you. I don't know what the fuck this guy said, but it was useless. Like, it was just equally as useless as everything we've watched before. And, and... Like we didn't need that line. We didn't need like a cool one-liner in this Mm-mm. moment. Are you talking about the one where he's like, you know, say your password before your, the thing gets to your lips? No, but like once she finally dies and she's dead, he hits us with like a fucking mic drop. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> it was just awful. he like leaned into her her ear and said some some dumb shit. Yeah, some dumb I'm shit. I'm bad, man. Uh, I'm just gonna toss it in. We get the girl in the chair, like we were already talking about. She's a girl from Girls. She can then using the NSA technology, look through every camera, everything. Blah blah. Very Batman, obviously. Dark Knight. Remember that? Uh, Absolute insane character. I, I heard you guys talk about wanted to the bathroom, but like the fact that she exists in this movie and like where she ends up in this movie, it's just which is nowhere. She ends <laughs> up in the chair, scot free. Yeah, dude's but, dead, and she got paid well. Great, cool. But I don't know. Why she's in the chair? <laughs> is she scared of this guy? Is she in not with on that? Like I didn't know we were going after teenagers. Here. Th- there's a line later where he goes, "I worked real hard to get all of this equipment, oh. so you better do good on this." And it's like, why would that motivate her? Yeah, <laughs> like, Tim. There's, he says that four times. Yeah, he does. And then he says, "Just so you know." They, every time they come back to him, he either says that or he says, these girls are going to kill me. So we got to find him. <laughs> he says it four fucking times. And, and it's, it's always ADR. ADR. <laughs> it's all ADR. And, it, and honestly, real talk, editing wise, it's because they were like, we need tension to be heightened here. So he has to keep reminding the audience of what's at stake because nobody gives a fuck otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't care about him or why he's going to be killed. And yeah, like to your point, hilariously of like, yeah, he's had this dream every night since this thing, right? So he's described this these girls enough to this woman to then make computerized files of her to remove the mask to then de-age them ten years. And again, she's like, I I figured they'd be you know, the I'm de-aging part. them ten years. They uh, oh, and that just happens to be the exact point in time we're in. But she's like, okay, this is what they look like ten years from now. Let me de-age them. They look exactly the same. I know. <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, yeah. I, I need. Uh, Kevin turns out a twenty-five-year-old and a fifteen-year-old. They're pretty. Like, they look. They look identical. Kevin would be very annoyed by this as well. This isn't like a police sketch where you're just. This is like. This is what these women looked like in your dreams, and it just looks like a black and white photo of the people in their costumes. And it's like, but this isn't like. It looks like if you told AI to draw Sydney Sweetie. Uh, yes, it would just draw totally. Sydney Sweeney. Yeah, it was but like he doesn't know Sydney Sweeney. No. So how does he do that? What, what they needed was they Less needed cheeks. this guy. They needed just More like eyes. A, <laughs> they needed a couple things. He's to, honed in on this over the years. <laughs> they needed like a moment in the seventies where when we meet this guy, he's sketching something. Right, they, they, they flesh out the character of this bad guy a little bit, make him a little Those less one dimensional, give him a skill he can sketch. Yeah, they're like, but this isn't. He's the drawing. Future. He's drawing the go. woman, the mother, pregnant. Right, we see how good he is at this. So when he gets out of this dream, he sketches another picture of Sydney. Something, something. Here's that's what, interesting. Here's what about they the would character. look like now, and somebody just clicks costumes off, and it's just their faces. It's like <laughs> that's really but what that's it was. like just like there wasn't even. So a now bit they're of looking through every you know? camera in the world for it. Yada yada yada. Uh, I'll toss it in. We kind of talked about it quick, but we'll do the whole thing. So and then they. Uh, you know, Adam Scott was trying to convince her to go to the baby shower, but she'd get sucked in. So she goes to the baby shower and she gets a Pepsi, which she doesn't want. She wants a beer, but she almost died yesterday. So they won't give her the beer. And Mike Epps is like, yo, make fun of Jersey. I'm squeezing all the juice out of these burgers, which they keep going to the flames popping up. And I was like, oh 
she's gonna have one of her flashes and we're gonna have a groundhog day and walk walk in again and don't squeeze the burgers i don't want a pepsi like we'd have no no i mean imagine everybody if you've seen any final destination movie imagine watching a final destination movie where they do the whole zoom in on different things with the sound effects of the crackling with the fire and then the, the fucking logs that do come up later on the, the truck and all this stuff and you're like whoo, whoo, whoo. this is gonna be all the things that are the fake outs of it. we're building this right. any of these could kill you but it's gonna be something else yeah but then imagine if none of the things really come back i thought <laughs> they're I was, just showing you the things i thought it was gonna explode the house or something yeah, like that but, no. not, but not only that the, the in in final destination it's acceptable to watch all these flashback moments like all these things where we catch back up to because you know there's tension built in because someone's gonna fucking die Midway through this movie, I'm like, I'm done with these. I really don't need to see her fucking seeing the future every but 900 times. But someone does die, Nick. We'll get to it. Instead, we go inside of the baby shower where it is, in fact, they, she got roped in. Uh-huh, and they're going to do games. And they're just the lamest games of all time. Which Poor they Emma are, Watson, man. But yeah, Emma. Emma Roberts. 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 Emma Roberts is Poor. there as Mary Parker. Of course, she's pregnant with a boy. They What's will, his name? They'll try to guess the name, but in a, in a very Simon. weird thing. I was like, I've never seen this game, but it's just them guessing names. So then I thought it, it was going to be like an on the alphabet or some shit like that. No, yeah. Like, it's just like, all right, you go first. Daniel. <laughs> no. no. All right. <laughs> Johnny. No, you guys are way cold. We got to talk about the game what before the this. What the fuck? <laughs> no, hold we got to talk about the game before this. The most important game. Richard. Where's Richard? Richard's in Mumbai of somewhere. I can't keep up. So the game they play is going around and like, let's guess the baby name. But before, before they that, that, they play the old, they what's play your favorite memory? Called, what's your favorite memory of your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Write it on a fucking piece of paper. And they start <laughs> going around and all these characters are telling, saying stories about their mom. Like a one-liner, here's a funny joke or whatever. My mom used to cut the crust off my bean butter. That's great. Also, you pull it out. My mom used to cut the peanut butter jelly crust off. Is this you, Anna? Like, what? what? Fuck, everyone's and mom did that at some point. Why did Emma Roberts sitting here fucking laughing and saying all this shit? Right. And then, then the, oh, she gets a blank one. She goes, is this yours, Dakota Johnson? And Dakota Johnson goes, yeah, I didn't have a fucking mom. She died in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Like, As I mean, if a normal human being would ever do just that. wouldn't put anything in he there. He just wouldn't do it. Are they going to go through and be like, wait, there's 26 people here, but I only read 25 <laughs> yeah. memories Wait a second. Well. Not only that. I put a blank one in. My mom died. I have no memories of her. She that, died during childbirth. But it's got to be something that everyone fucking knows about her, right? This is not the first time she's meeting Mary. It she, is. There, is it? She introduces herself to Mary. She has never met Mary. Okay, then that's acceptable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, she but again, know that. so I think the hook here, right, is that it is the EMT firefighters throwing the party for Mary because they, much of them, must know her. But yeah, Dakota Johnson, who's been in a fling with Ben before, doesn't know her. She's never gone. Okay, that, that makes far. sense then. So people, no one would know who she is. So they wanted to be nah, part of it. No one is a bridge too far because well, they wouldn't know her uh, mom was never. I mean, Mike she Epps' was a fox. wife knew her. Well, that's because he, he's a firefighter. He's like her captain, right? So, but I mean, I'm saying people in the room do know that she doesn't have a mom. That's right, gotten fair. there at okay. some point. Because anyway. again, this is her defining character. Uh, anyway, but uh, why is this a game at all? This is the well, no, but again, no, going no, back no, to no, it, like, this isn't like a uh, an exercise at at fucking summer camp where nobody knows each other. All right, name, say, say your name and a hobby that you have or whatever. Right. It's just a weird thing it's to do. It's a weird it. game, but it's luckily yeah. interrupted by a horrible fire accident. Uh, ben Parker comes in and says, yo, oh, she had a flashback of the future and shit again. Uh, she well, one thing that really confused me when they're in doing this game is the chatter outside with Mike Epps and Adam Scott. I thought I had... I legitimately thought I had the Dan Lebertard show podcast playing on my phone mm. at many times because they're all many talking, times. but they want, they want you to know that they're still outside cooking the burgers. So while they're talking, you sit here like, no, nah, you got to flip it. You got to flip that. <laughs> so <laughs> odd. Yeah. Was See, that weird, was it. That was what we were saying. I was so a, dominant in the mix. It was such a weird choice. That was, See, that it wasn't, wasn't the thing. It wasn't muffled at all. It was just right I didn't there. hear that. That's great. That wasn't the thing that was odd to me. The odd thing that was odd to me was a fucking balloon kept popping and scaring the shit out of me. And I was like, are her powers only triggered when loud noises happen? Is that what we're going to be the rest of this fucking movie? Uh, they rush off to everybody's getting called in because at the Pepsi Cola factory, a bunch of fireworks are going going off or could go off they don't even go off they could go off there's a fire in there wait it's i a, got a, I got yeah, a question go, sure this place didn't burn to the ground no remember not only that when <laughs> when mike epps wants to go in and help people they're like there's it's a death trap it's all the gonna come gonna down explode. it's all gonna blow up and come down you can't go in there and then but so okay a so week and a half later it's they moved still all standing. the fireworks back in they were like we guys we, we kind of keep moving these fireworks <laughs> we don't want to put them <laughs> Oh We're my really God. lucky. It only it singed a lot of crates, but it didn't set them off. Didn't set them off. 
Anyways, there's a bunch of people there. Dakota Johnson, this this might be the funniest joke in the entire fucking movie. I, just skip through all the time. Jumps right here. Dakota Johnson going at this guy with, with fucking oh chest compression. She is chest compressing this guy for two <laughs> solid minutes. Yeah, and dude. then they're like, we need you over here. <laughs> we need you over here. And she goes, okay. And looks at it. And she's like, you're all right. And the guy goes, yeah. <laughs> no, no, he goes like this. He's like this. He's just he's staring like, at her like, you've been reviving it. Yeah. He's like, so, how long? So bad. My heart. We got and fucking, I've, been, I've been awake. We have a fireworks factory. <laughs> like, it's going like this whole situation. Uh, right? This dude's getting fucking pumped. <laughs> the camera's just spinning around Dakota Johnson in semi-slow-mo. And we're just seeing her looking for what's going on. Fucking, they roll it's by. So and he's like, he, he doesn't need anything. He's just got a bad leg. She's like, check the abdomen. He's like, oh, oh internal injuries. What's Why the, did I think of that as an EMT as well? What oh sucks God. the most about this is like you they only put this in to have the chest compression thing come up later. So she could do the hand, bloody hand. But like, it, oh yeah, that too. Yeah, the, the visual of that. But I was just like, it, 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 <laughs> this man was just on the ground and just kind of like, well, what do we do with the guy now? Oh, he's okay. He's alive now. It just felt so off. It felt like they wrote something, kind of forgot about what the status of the dude was going to be at the end of all this. And they were like, just show him alive. Like, all right, you're alive now, sir. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. It was 100%. so odd, dude. So, yeah, then we have the jumps, and she tries to stop uh, Mike Epps from getting in the, truck, the ambulance, and he won't have it. But then she jumps around a bunch, oh and God. then she, he pulls off, and she turns around, and then it's, it, guess what? The Mack truck hits him at a whole 15 miles an hour. <laughs> Guys, I need I need everyone to understand how fucking funny this scene is, how perfect this scene is, because the chest compressions, all of the things going on, none of it makes sense. Every line said, every single choice made is, like, bewildering. We see her trying to stop Mike Epps from getting in this fucking ambulance because she knows, she gets this vision that he's going to get hit and he's going to fucking die. I would have never bet any <laughs> amount of the money that... Five seconds later. It was not even five <laughs> seconds. He gets in the car. He takes off. Boom. Dead. It's like it's Regina George and Mean Girls type fucking hit. Yeah. And it makes no sense. And then it's followed up with Nick looking over at me and just like pointing out the most obvious fucking thing that this goddamn like this ambulance just got hit enough to kill Mike Epps out of nowhere. And we see the overhead shot of like where this other car was going and there's like maybe a block left before it's the water why were you going as fast <laughs> as you were going it doesn't add up toward a fire toward a smoldering building it's a dump truck that has nothing in the back and it's going 100 miles an hour and it's got maybe 20 more feet to stop it's just so stupid this breaks dakota Johnson, it's comedic. ladies and gentlemen she goes home and just collapse. Well, I mean, she does the hand thing for a while and tries to do compressions on him, and he won't come back. And Michael Scott pulls, or no, not Michael Scott, Adam Scott pulls her off of him. Uh, she goes home and kind of collapses into herself on our couch or whatever. And uh, uh, hold on, no, 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 the birds. Yeah, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, everybody. Hold on, hold on, everybody. Hold I remember Lay's like, go home and watch some old. No, movies. no, no. Hold on, you're not right. You're not right. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. So what happened is she went to the doctor to get checked because she kept having the flashbacks, the so right. flash forwards. The doctor says, go home, chill out, fucking hang out. Just have, you're fine. All the scans are fine. You're fine. She goes home. She's Real chilling. Quick, with this, I, want, I do want to say that there's very little music in this movie. Like 100%. overall, like score wise and license wise, like a surprising lack of it. But any time it is there, it's the most on the nose thing. Like remember in Captain Marvel, the, the I'm just a girl I'm fight where we're there. like, get what you guys are going for. This might work for some people, but I think it's a little too on the nose. Every choice in this movie is the most on the nose. And some of it could be quite enjoyable for like, it, I think it hit that right level, but it's movies and TV shows anytime they reference it because like go home and watch an old movie or something. And so she goes what home. The fucking hell. Who talks like that? And what does she watch, Greg? She goes home in what I can only assume to be June, July, August. It's beautiful New York days. Mm -hmm. They're barbecuing. Houses. She goes home and watches a Christmas carol. Yeah. Why? So that Ebenezer Scrooge can, spirit, are these the visions mm -hmm. of what has to be or what might be or whatever? <laughs> then like in probably. The most offensive thing you can do in a movie about seeing the future and playing with time is they just dilate it beyond fucking belief. That line happens, and she goes, I got news for you, Scrooge. You're fucked either way, or whatever the fuck she says. Then she gets up. The popcorn goes off. She opens it, breaks the glass uh, thing. Oh, no. And then a bird fall, fl flies into the window and smashes the window. Like, oh, shit. What the fuck? She goes over there. She opens the window, looks at the dead bird, closes the window. She's like that. And it, the glass is fixed. And then Scrooge talks again. 
She doesn't say shit. The microwave immediately goes off, totally fucked up. And then she's like, it doesn't. And then the bird, and I'm like, what this, you just, you just showed me the scene, mm -hmm. how it plays out on the timeline and then changed the timing of this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any fucking sense the way you just did. Was about. it a couple of scenes earlier where she was like, I got to get home and watch Idol. Yeah. 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 Also, just to Tim's point about the what? music at one point, and I think it was in the beginning of the movie when the ambulance is rolling. They have a song about spiders in there. That's like yeah. a rock uh -huh. song. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, and they, later, they, 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 we'll get to Toxic, but... But then they don't have... Like, I'm like, wait, this is like early 2000s, and you're not going to do any No Doubt? Like, spider, like walking into spider web, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You, got, you can't too, do that too, shit? Too, too much like Marvel. Uh, anyways, though, she gets a phone call from Adam Scott, a.k.a. Ben, and Uncle Ben says, hey, I know you're fucking there. Answer the phone. Also, a terrible read from him here, too. Because he's like, Cassie? Or is Cassie? Yeah, Cassie. Oh, whatever. Anyways, hey, Funeral sitting in Poughkeepsie. You should come. It would mean a lot to the widow or whatever. And I'm like, you don't fucking say that. Like, not to mention, widow's got enough on her fucking mind right now. She's not gonna be like, where's Cassie? Where's the fucking <laughs> the, weird, the woman the who couldn't orphan? save my husband's life? Where's the weird orphan? Um, <laughs> and she's like, no, that's not gonna happen. Uh, but then all the glass stuff happens and the bird stuff happens, and she's like, oh man, I should go. And so she goes. Uh, but like, sorry, can we talk about the bird thing for a second? Yeah. Like. Every single thing in this movie is just like, well, we need to show the audience this somehow. How should we do it? A bird just fucking crashes into the window and dies. That and happens. Like, but like, oh, I know it happens, Nick. But like the way, <laughs> like the timing of it happening. And why does it feel like every time she gets one of like, th I'm watching this movie trying to understand what is triggering the flashbacks. Like at, at any, or the flash The sounds. Like, it was always but, the loud sounds. It's, it's loud sounds, right? Yeah, like, it's loud sounds. And, and that's the the most bizarre thing is it's like whenever she, she's around something that makes a loud sound, it causes a future flash, but it's like, so the glass breaking like caused the bird, to, like that whole thing. Or no, like no, the, no, it was, was the fine. beeping of the microwave. A... I think like triggered it. And then on the subway, it was the, the other train going by. It was like, Whoa, it's it, just, like, anything that's it, jarring to her. But in the it's diner, weird. what was it? Him fucking breaking people's necks. Oh. When she gets thrown so over the, she, the fucking chair. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Your spine but fucking it goes back to what separate. I was saying of like the level of like, unnecessary violence out of nowhere like the bird coming in they didn't need to do that it could have been so many different there's a fucking cat right yeah. there's a cat that we already introduced cat. that comes yeah. in and out of the yeah thing. the cat could have just popped up <laughs> a really like, good point had a why did we set up the cat i don't know but no but one of the the line about the about the scrooge thing was like no matter what uh, no matter what you do about the past or whatever you can't like a save a life like that was mm. i know but then have the cat outside trying to get in and then the cat slips and falls you know what I mean? Mm. Do Impossible something that, that sets up that, like that. What is weird? Instead of just a fucking out of all the days and times, a pigeon just flies into the goddamn thing. It's wild, man. Uh, she decides to go to the funeral. Uh, so then you know she gets on her best funeral garb. Oh no, she doesn't. She just throws on her red coat over her normal clothes. I'm like, oh, this is not what you'd wear to a funeral, ma'am. Man, there was a funeral scene. No, we never nope. get there because oh. we get to the train station, and that's where all three of our, uh, or I'm sorry, all four of our characters come together. And this, of course, sets off all the bells and whistles. That woman in the chair headquarters who <laughs> says, "Yo, they're all in the fucking Grand Central Terminal. This is crazy." And by and the way, like, can I go back to my family? <laughs> and he's like, "No." I, what could possibly, you know, bring that? What, what's the common denominator and he's like maybe they haven't found it yet or maybe it's about to happen i thought they were gonna i was because she was like there's got to be something there that's like bringing them all together and he goes not something and i was like but someone i said that under my breath and he goes but something in the future <laughs> i was like man they couldn't even do the cliche line <laughs> like <laughs> so and they all end up on the same train of course uh of course uh, uh there's a man playing psp of course this doesn't make any sense it wasn't out yet but this is a different timeline i'll allow it um oh man new york's getting crazier what the fuck are you talking because a train went by loud but then it's all disjointed what we're seeing and how it's happening and yada yada so there's a woman there who's weird and there's a psp guy and then every she keeps seeing uh, dakota johnson keeps seeing uh ezekiel show up and kill all the other girls and he's like oh, she's like oh man that's fucking crazy whatever blah, blah, blah. and then one guy's like is this the train to fucking portland my favorite my favorite character in the whole moment. fucking movie there's this guy that just after all this violent ass killing happens not in, His in timeline. the same timeline but like just like we see this this fucking dopey dude chairs everywhere on this train sits right next to dakota johnson mm -hmm. which i get guys are creepy whatever but i don't know that they were trying to play it that way no i don't he think so i think he was legitimately and, and he just goes not knowing what train was on. oh hey is this the train to like whatever fucking the newark Pearl mountain or whatever the hell and she goes no i hope not or her, yeah her response is the worst thing ever i hope not 
And then we hear an announcement that it's not, so he gets so off. So he gets off, train. and it's Gives just like, train. why would you say it like that? That's mean as shit, continuing yeah. her just being fucking mean. I think later, like, not that long later, we see him, she gets on another train, and we see him, and he goes, am I on the wrong train? And I was like, that's she, she says that Her response funny. is great. What was that? She, she, goes, goes, I don't know, man. she was like, dude, I don't know. <laughs> like, what are you doing? She's like, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> But it's, it's what we were all dude. thinking, right? Like, this is so annoying that this is, she just did it. I got a good laugh. Anyways, it. though, so she sees all the girls die, and she's like, that's fucking weird. And then she sees Ezekiel coming down, and she's like, oh my God, you are all gonna die. She gets up. Everybody get off the train. You you three get off the train. You're gonna die. And they're like, is this is a threat. And she, come on, go. And she grabs skateboarder girls, uh, skateboard and jumps off. She's like, I told you you have to come with me or whatever. And she's like, well, they were like, I don't know about that shit. What are you fucking talking about or whatever? And then like, uh, they, they officers, are, she's kidnapping me. Exactly. The one comment, the one comment, and the officers don't even really react to it. Uh, but then they do turn around and see Spider Man, evil Spider Man, crawling on the rooftop there. And it's Ezekiel, right? Healing guy. So they run and they jump on the train. Uh, the other train. This is where we get the other line about where this guy's going or whatever. Train leaves. They think they've beaten it. They ain't beaten shit, right? You hear uh, Ezekiel land. Then you hear the guy like, all right, everybody, you're going to have a great day on the train. And fuck, oh, my God, <laughs> help me, Jesus. <laughs> and the train grinds it all, and they fucking, then, then the shit. And the the fucking, venom's crawling up my body. <laughs> when it hits my lips, I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> the girls all jump off the train. Uh, they run into some more officers. They're like, they, they try to arrest a meat, huh? Endless police officer. They try to arrest Dakota Johnson immediately because this is a video game logic town where Dakota Johnson's character has broken the law and now every police officer knows, including the fucking all points bulletin news that's going to hit the radio in literally five minutes. Yeah. Anyways, though, they start to handcuff her and I thought they did, but they didn't because Spider-Man shows up and he's fucking killing everybody. He's murking him and pulling him under. And it's, it's scary. This is a good scene. I this thought. scene reminded me of uh, Spider-Man 2 when Doc Ock is first becoming Claws. Doc Ock and they're like trying to surgery, uh, yeah. take them off or whatever. I don't remember exactly what they were doing. And we just see shadows of people just being destroyed and it is so much more violent than it needs to be. That's this scene. These police officers are just, there's so many of them and they mm. die in the most ridiculous ways and it doesn't even feel like it's ratcheting up. It just feels like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But the, there's the sign and we just see people's legs and he just gets pulled under the sign and it's like, what the fuck is this? bad spider-man doing like it's so intense but also like why why isn't he trying to kill the girls first? That, that's the one thing that 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 gets me about this is that you had your shot here you i mean this is spider-man we're talking about right does anyone believe that if spider-man if even any spider-man for any incantation of or universe wanted to kill three people who don't have powers he'd kill them in a fucking second there's no way that even two like they stop him too easily in this, and he keeps getting stopped so easily that I'm like, we got to come up with more creative ways. Even Action at the end, is not like, this movie strong through. That's fair enough. Uh, because again, they just run away. They run up some stairs. Dakota Johnson immediately knows there's an exit over there. Let's go. It'll take us to the street. They run up the street. They steal a cab. They peel off, and they're like the most helpful New York cabbie of all time. Like, you know what I mean? New York, big, big NYC cab is funding this movie. <laughs> oh, here are your bags. Yeah, have a great day. Bring, oh, my God, my God. And so again, That's weird. They drive off, and she's like, I got no answers for you, whatever. And then the, it's immediately on the radio. It is already on the fucking radio This is happening. What do they say on the radio, though, Greg? We what? get the three girls in the back of the radio, of the, the, the taxi. They're all bickering, arguing. They're not getting along at all. Dakota Johnson did just kidnap them. They're talking about kidnapping a lot. And like it's like very weird about how aware they are. Throws her phone thing. out the window. Yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. like insane. You can get out if you want. And then she locks him. Like, no, you can't actually. Like, You're the like, only ones. This is fucking weird. They hear like, oh man, there's like a scary dude or something. There's also someone that kidnapped three fucking girls. And it's just like, how did this happen so fast? And how are you gonna talk about these news stories that way? And they wanted us to. They wanted us to laugh at a lot of this, I feel, because Dakota Johnson delivers a couple of lines that are like, I'm not kidnapping you. And she turns around and says, this isn't a kidnapping. I'm not kidnapping you all. And like they, they, this was supposed to be played for comedy, I think, but it just like I didn't. It was. I, dude, I don't know. I feel like parts of it were. I do, think, yeah. I do think it was. And I think in a, in a better movie, this would have been funnier. And with a, with a, a cast that was vibing a bit more or whatever, yeah. better direction, and shortening the gaps here. I think it could have, because it was. I'm not kidnapping you. It feels like it's a kidnapping. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, there was stuff there. For me, it really me. felt like they were trying to explain their way out of this movie being about kidnapping, which it very clearly was for so much of it. Maybe. The, I this, mean, it definitely doesn't work. Way too long. Yeah, it takes way too long. There's no music to it. It doesn't work in a million different ways. Uh, and, and they also confused me in the theater, because she's like, oh, but, uh, nobody saw him. Nobody saw him but us. Like, Sydney, C and I was like, Oh, did is he using some kind of invisibility thing yeah. that only they can? And I was like, oh, they just oh, I was like, 
hour or way later in the movie where I was like, oh no, they, <laughs> everybody could see him. He just killed the, uh, the they're going to think the red coat woman killed the train driver and then also kidnapped these girls apparently. Well, and then one killed of, one eight of the cops. Killed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and like, there's no cameras down there at no, all zero cameras. to see the black suit Spider-Man killing everybody. I, I, I think we also brushed really quickly off of like one of the more perplexing scenes was we see Ezekiel on the train looking at them and like, oh shit, I'm going to like that. Those are the girls. Damn, they outsmarted me. They're outside of the train. I'm walking after them. And then what I thought was a flash forward into the future, but they're like, who's chasing you? That guy is. And you just see him crawling on the ceiling. And I was like, I, I don't know. Is this real? What is going on? It's just, yeah, they're, they're it's doing so the, the weird reality stuff. So it was like, is yeah. it, where are yeah. we at? Whatever. It doesn't work. Uh, she drives them off into the woods. Uh, Ezekiel talks to a woman in the chair, and she's like, they're gone. I don't fucking know. You better find them. It's fucking expensive. Drives them into the woods. It's random woods. Parks them there. Do we need to recap this? There's some beef jerky. I think we do. We How need, do we all know each other? We just, we need to, to bring, sorry, I thought you were going to skip past that even more. I just want to say, like, the plan here was Dakota Johnson, and I get that there's a lot going on, and she's thinking on her feet. They take the taxi into the middle of the woods, drive the taxi off-road into the fucking woods, she then leaves these three teenage girls. Stay right to, here for three to hours. Understand like their backstories and how they all are connected somehow. Or not all connected. They're all connected to Dakota Johnson somehow in the loosest way as possible. Of like, oh, you flicked me off one time. Like, mm -hmm. whatever. Cool. And then she's just like, hey, I know that I did just fucking kidnap you, but we need to figure out what's going on. I think I have an idea. Why does she have an idea? Because her mom fucking died in the Amazon. That is the reason. Hunting she's spiders. like, cool. I'm going to go away. I'll be back in three hours. She's just going to leave these young girls in, in, the, in the, the fucking woods, yeah. which they kind of comment on being weird, but it's like that doesn't make it acceptable in any way. But on top of that, when she eventually does return, it's pitch black in yeah. these woods. Yeah. I thought maybe, all right, it's 11 a.m. by three, by, you know, three hours later, it's still going to be at least sunny. She wanted these fucking 16-year-old girls to just be in the pitch black woods without food. But now, Tim, hold on. To their credit, those three 16-year-old girls did start a small fire, if you noticed. They had a small campfire but, there. They had a bag of beef jerky and a little campfire they made. I think you're also missing the fact that they had light in the woods from the diner that was 15 feet away. By <laughs> foot. By foot. By foot, it's 15 feet away. By car. By car, it's so much further. It's 18 miles away. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even get me started yet. So, yeah, okay, yeah. All that shit just happens. We just talked about it. We've come up with the reasons they're all together. We also start hearing some of the sob stories about him, yada, yada, yada. Uh, yeah, she goes, she, she, they say something about he, he, yeah, he was like a spider guy in that Dakota Johnson's like, dang, oh, my God, my mom died in the, Am the Peruvian Amazon studying spiders. So she's like, stay for three hours. She drives back. She goes in there. She starts reading her mom's notes. She's like, where is it? Peptides, DNA, whatever. Oh, fucking Spider-Man. Direct quote. Direct quote right? yeah. yeah. The What are they? Aranyas? The Aranyas. Oh, they did this and they did that and they could climb. And the cat, the straight cat, she's like, what if you didn't know you could climb walls but because you never tried? And I'm like, first off, haven't we all tried to climb a wall? Come yeah. on now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But she goes over there and does the Tobey Maguire thing and slides down and it's just terrible. I'm like, it oh just doesn't Don't play. tell anybody about this. <laughs> she says to the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the girls are like, yo, this fucking sucks. And her dad's rich and hates everything. So whatever. Let's go to the diner we saw back there. It's right through the woods this way. Okay, cool. And they start wandering. It's it dark. And it is the, oh, man. Well, you said this was a shortcut. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, they're going to get it. Oh, no, there's the diner. They just made the shortcut work. They're at the diner. I'm going to order everything. We should keep a low profile. Let's sit at the bar. Blah, blah, blah. We should keep a low profile. Let's sit at the bar where everyone can see us. Order Not everything. one of the big booths. And then, and, of course, go flirt with the, the boys over there and they go dance on the table. We'll get to that. But it sets off the truck driver who's reading the paper. It's like, yo, three girls are missing. And they look favorite thing. It wasn't a TV commercial, It was though. even worse. It wasn't a newscast. They're, they're fucking there. I mean, at least it wasn't the main characters learning something. But it, it was it involved the main characters. Big front page of the bugle. The newspaper. <laughs> three girls kidnapped. They're probably at the... Wait, how did the that newspaper. The already? newspaper. Right. The most breaking news of all. Uh -huh. They were like... J. Jonah Jameson was literally like... Stop the presses! Three girls have been abducted from Grand Central. But let's Eek! let's, let's break that paper. down. How do they print that out? That's my question. <laughs> Newspapers. We've all seen the scene in the morning where the fucking pay, the truck pulls up and throws it at like five o'clock in the morning. That's when newspapers get printed in this universe, yeah. right? Not uh, five in the afternoon. I did work for an afternoon daily. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, fair right. enough. And our cutoff was noon, but for your paper, it's for stuff to be in that issue that day. Fair but enough. Still. 
again, to, I, it doesn't work. The timeline doesn't work in any way. I mean, they, needed, they just needed to have a fucking. I mean, I guess you can't have a. But well, they knew Tim would get mad at him for that. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And anyway, so he calls it in. That gets intercepted by a woman in the chair. She kicks it to Ezekiel, who's like, "I'm going to my nice car. My Dial Chevy. me into the police force. Hey, it's me. I'm also the police force, and this is nothing. I got it. Don't it's worry. A, it's a code seventy five twenty one. No worry about it, bitch. <laughs> like, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to call me that. <laughs> okay. Damn, I know that was Samuel's because that's how he calls yeah, me. He on calls the radio. All the time. Really with his weird it. accent uh, is everything's ADR to shit <laughs> anyways he speeds off in his Maserati or whatever the fuck it was, out a, there. It was a, a Chevrolet it was a Corvette yeah. Dakota Johnson shows back up in the woods in her truck and she's like, her car and she's like what the shit so she walks just like the girls did finds it out right on the other side there's the diner sees him dancing to Britney Spears toxic of course right walk <laughs> walks in there like what are you guys doing? Blah, blah, blah. Can, I, can I stop you real quick? Because I, I want to talk about this scene a little bit more. Like sure. These three teenage fucking girls who do not get along. They don't want to be part of this, anything. They just dealt with what is undeniably the scariest thing that ever happened in their lives, right? Sure. And then, then they get kidnapped. Then they're in the woods and they're told to fucking say it gets dark. Their entire plot at this point is not, hey, I'm scared and we should figure this out. Their entire plot is, I'm hungry. How hungry are we? And it's like, guys, it's not like it's been fucking days. It's been literally hours at most since you've eaten. And she's like, I got, what, Nick, do you, do, can you relate? No, I 100% with you. I was going to agree with you yeah. and, and, and get on top of that. But uh, then, then they go in, they go into this the diner and whatever. They sit and they order way too much food and all the stuff that just doesn't play. It doesn't work at all. And then out of nowhere, Sydney Sweeney just Ugh. looks over at this table of boys and turns into, what would you call it, Andy? Yeah, have you seen the thing on Twitter where, that's been going around, a viral thing where people have been posting clips and it's like, post a clip of a movie or what's, what's a moment in a movie where you thought to yourself, oh my God, they're doing this. And like one of the more popular ones is like the top down sequence with the shotgun, the fire shotguns in John oh, Wick 4, right? And you're like, holy nasty. shit. When I, the second I see Sydney Sweeney looking off camera and I'm like, oh my God, she's okay. flirting with like a guy or something. She's like attracted to somebody. How is this a possible plot line right now? How is this a story beat they're going to go through with? It, it, it's so outside of the norm of what characters would do in this situation that it makes you, it makes you hate the movie. It makes you start hating these characters. Teenagers are dumb, guys. That's true. And, 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 and I get that, but what teenagers would do in this situation <laughs> is teenagers would find the nearest fucking phone and call the police because they'd be like, I don't know what's going on. Someone in this trio should have been like, why are we trusting this random woman? Let's go to the diner and call Guys, the cops. Guys, we all know her kind of. We and then her. this should have turned into, first off, the train <laughs> sequence should have been Predator 2. It should have been scary as fuck. And then this sequence should have been Terminator where they go to the fucking police station and then one by one, the guy kills him, and then she's got to save him from the police station. Well, one thing, you, one thing you also forget, Nick, is uh, the writers already had that in mind. Because when, before Dakota Johnson leaves, Sidney Sweeney says, asks her, can we trust you? I forget what, where the fuck Dakota, fan, or D Dakota Johnson said back. It was probably really badly delivered and like really flat. But she said something to the effect of like, yeah, yeah you yeah. can trust me. Yeah, you like, you trust have me. to trust me. You have to trust me. But you just need to lay low and like don't bring any attention on yourself. Yeah. And they're and, like, all right, cool. And Sydney Sweeney, the one that's most scared of it, like the, the one character that is kind of taking this seriously, she sees a fucking table of boys and she's not going, but then Skater Girl or whatever is like, hey, let's go over here and it's fucking a, it's dance. Stupid. And the way that the. And Skater the Girl, who's like so. Strong and independent. I don't Way think we'll give these boys else. the time of no, day. No, fuck that. She's like, fuck these fucking losers. Yeah. But, but instead, we see this scene play out over the course of the next 10 minutes approximately 15 different ways just through all the stupid flashes and shit. It's nonsensical. that We, we get conversations um, throughout it of Dakota Johnson and Ezekiel of, like, are they actually talking to each other? Are they not? Like, who the fuck gives a shit? And the amount of times it just cuts to Sydney Sweeney, and at some point, all three of the girls dancing on the table to Britney Spears' Toxic. And I'm like, all right, this is going to end up at least in a dope fight scene to Britney Spears' Toxic. It doesn't. It just ends up in, like, a couple incredibly brutal kills that are way more brutal than they need to be. Like and that. then him fucking, like, holding her arm and Toxic's going in inside. Toxic! It's yeah. like, this is so <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, he fucking, I swear, he did, like, a Mortal Kombat, like, spine sever on, on Sydney Sweeney. It was really, vi it sounded like, it's, yeah. the sound in that little theater was very, very good. Granted, we were in, like, a phone booth. But, but when yeah. he finally stabs <laughs> Madam Webb, she's warped back to the cab, and she says, let's try this again. And her plan is to jump into the cab dri drive not only drive turn on the radio to find toxic so that she can know how much time she has mm -hmm. as if that matters at mm -hmm. all she gets stuck behind a truck with logs on it and gets around it they're dancing 
they're dancing at the thing at which point they make the same reference i, t- I lean over to him like she's later than she was when she walked because it's 18 miles by car yeah <clears throat> of course spider or ezekiel shows up no madam webb yet madam webb drives the fucking taxi into him just like tumbling him through schwarzenegger and terminator 100 percent. girls yeah. get in the car the girls get in the car which really bummed me out because i thought oh no no, no wait sorry I was thankful that they did it differently there, where it's like, let me crash into him. Very shocking and like surprising. I was gonna be really bummed out when this happened because I was like, oh my god, they're gonna they're gonna do this a third time because he's gonna kill them all here again. She's gonna have to redo it a third time and figure out a third way to do it again. And I was like, oh no, I don't want to relive through the sequence. But yeah, they just drove off in the car and she's like, I'm very disappointed in you all, Madam Web. And I was like, oh interesting, we're not seeing it creep up her arm, we're not seeing anything. And like throughout the next few scenes, she will hold her hand, and there's nothing on it, no visual. I'm like, did they forget to? put this in there it doesn't matter uh she drives them off they get a hotel room uh she puts all the kids to bed but not only that it's like give me some explanation as to how that toxicity like doesn't affect you that way it, yeah it, that's it, what it, it totally. pulls you close to him now totally. now you guys are bonded and then we get this next scene of like you see each other in this in this yeah. web world and don't give even me get some me explanation fucking started on this so yeah. she she's they're all sleeping in the room she gets in the cab she drives the cab back to the scene of the crime at the diner she walks into the diner she suddenly mind melds with ezekiel who lays out his grand plan mind. And of course, they had identified that it was a uh, web web junior. So she, he knew he was telling her about it, her mom and this, that and the other. And it's all this fucking shit and da, 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 blah, blah. And then she wakes up in her bed. So this was all in the venom dream web world that Ezekiel also can tap into apparently or whatever it turns out. OK, sure. The girls girls don't wake up. She puts on a song and cranks it up. To then wake them up, to then turn it off, to then stop the. And I was I like, literally, the, I, I forget what the song was, but it might as well have been "Wake Me Up." Like it's just so on the nose. I was Great um time. um uh it's it, Tiff, it's not Tiffany. Who was the mall singer who would go everywhere? The cur- Tiffany. It, it was Tiffany. Yeah, I mean that was Tiffany. Running just as fast as we can. Yeah. Holding on to one another's hand. hand. And they all wake trying up to, to get away into the night. Uh, anyway, so so they wake up. Let's then they practice CPR. <laughs> Y'all need to learn CPR. Naturally. This Naturally. guy's got venom powers. It could stop your heart. And it, but if you'd be okay if you did this, and but you just have to do it all at the same pace and do it all the time. What if I get tired? Then you switch off. Two pumps in. I'm tired on a pillow. Fine. Fuck. Somebody else get in. The biggest thing about this is like obviously we we know what's happening. This is a movie. They're setting this thing up, but they're setting this up. Good movie, bad movie. It doesn't fucking matter. There's a team. We're gonna have to use all of our different powers all together. Three of us. Learn how to do a thing. Whatever. No. This movie is like, hey, we all have the same power. It's CPR. Sure, only one of us knows it. <laughs> I'm gonna teach the three of you, and then it's like, alright, cool. Let's fucking figure this out. But oh, we get tired. We have to trade off. So the scene is literally gonna be a throw. <laughs> back to her doing cpr for way too long of them taking turns i guess i'm like there's no way they're actually gonna do that they do but even in this scene this scene where she teaches them this they do it and they go man you're a really good teacher that's the hat moment that was when the hat came down (laughs) holy shit but and correct me if i'm wrong because i could have missed seen this but at the end when this comes back the payoff is that they have to do cpr on dakota johnson yeah and uh one of them starts getting tired the other one goes i'll get in starts doing it and then Dakota Johnson wakes up. The third one didn't even get to yeah. fucking go. Yeah. Yeah. Sweetie didn't have to go. I thought she did. Did she not? No, I, yeah, I, I, I remember it like that too. So but I, I just, I, but I again, after I like four pumps, I'm tired. <laughs> I was like, do some calisthenics. <laughs> the You're adrenaline teenagers. is going to carry you on for a little bit on this. Uh, after CPR training, she's like, listen, I think I got, I got to go to Peru. I got to go where? She's going to go to Peru. To Peru. No, she's wanted. <laughs> I'm with you, but like again, she snuck in through the back, and there wasn't police tape on her door, so maybe they really don't know it's her at this point. I'm with you. I'm with you. No, no, no. But like, I just she is driving a stolen cab with no plates. Oh, even more conspicuous. How did she take the plates off? Fucking crowbar she found on the ground. Piece of trash. The taxi. (laughs) I just like what what I want to see. The I want to see the footage of her. Going on the website Priceline.com. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to see her arriving at the airport. At the airport, talking to the booking agent, whatever. And like the funniest scene for me, I think of this whole movie is the transition of her being on this bus with a lot of like Peruvian people in the bus with her. It's like a little, not like a school bus or anything. It looks like a kind of rundown bus, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then the next scene, <laughs> she's in the same jungle, just like she's just there now. And it's like this all by took, herself. How this took no plan. This took like 
She's just she's got there her now. mom's notebook. She's all by herself. She's on the banks of the thing. By the way, she left the kids with Adam Scott uh, at, at, at uh, Mary's Emma, place. Emma Roberts place, yeah. Uh, and she's there. She has a photo. She looks up. I am at the same exact spot on the river because in 30 fucking years, they have kept this in pristine condition Amazon to make it look grow. almost exactly the same. Global warming getting to fuck this place up. And then, of course, the mystic guy is back there and he's like, I knew you'd come back. Oh, well, I, I birthed you. And then he takes her to the pond, the pool, and like, yo. It's all cool looking handsome. This is where it is. This is where you were. This is where your mom died. This is where you came to be. And this is where you're going to find greater understanding. Do you trust me? I guess I have no cho choice at this point. Pushes her in the water, Doctor Strange style. Knocks yeah, her little spirit cool. body out. It falls in there. She's in the web now. She's, Spirit's wet. <laughs> she's gone. Her thread goes beyond when she was born. So she goes through and sees her mother's death. Uh, sees her mother say she's sorry to the baby. Then goes further to being in a doctor's office where the doctor says, yo, your baby has this uh, bad uh, Genetic disease. disease of some sort, yeah. Life expectancy isn't long or whatever. And the mom's like, what can we do? She's like, jack shit, you can go home and rest or whatever. And she's like, I'm going to go to Peru because I heard there's some spiders with some peptides. And she's like, there. I recommend you don't travel right now. It's and she's like, well, you're exactly. offering me as fucking well wishes and I, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to go do this shit. And I thought like this had been her life. It turns out she's only been after these spiders for like a month. two months. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you what, she had a lot of progress because the other guy, Ezekiel's been at it for years and couldn't fucking find I was going to say, before this, she was just working at a Walgreens. Right. <laughs> well, I got, I mean, you. James Webb, though. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah. She's yeah. a little gifted. But you get that. I mean, she was a scientist, obviously, right? Like she yeah. had been studying this specific field for a long time, which is very, very convenient because 100%. that if your child had this one genetic disorder that you spent pretty much your entire life gearing for, pretty cool. I, one extremely unearned moment is coming up right here of her Dakota's hugging her spirit mom. And saying, I'm so sorry that I hated you for so long. Mm -hmm. You don't, why did you, for, well, first off, why did you hate her? Like I, well, she hated her because she went into the Amazon and died. Yeah. Instead like, of being her mom. Okay. But like, it's not like this was like a Kung Fu Panda sort of thing where it's like, oh, you gave me up and then you went on to go die. Like to her, all she knows is like, oh, she died during, di during childbirth in the Amazon. But there was never like any sort of hint at neglect or anything well, like that. Well, to jump in here, I, I'm half with you, but mostly against you. Where I feel it was not done well in this movie, the telegraphing of, I hate my mom because I hate my mom, period. Yeah. I got that she was an orphan. Us strays got to stick together. I don't have any memories of my mom, but I didn't get the disdain. I didn't get that I'm actually upset about this. Well, I do get as both a parent and a child that if like, Jen was in her final months of pregnancy. It was like, I want to go to the Amazon. I'd be like, the fuck you do. What are you talking about? And you know what I mean? So but I'd I, be, I guess if you're a kid and you never had any other relatives tell you about what was happening with the, like, uh, like, Hey, but yeah, sorry. Your mom, like back, she I was think, like super neglectful. She was not like a response, but it's not right? a neglect thing. Right. It's like, she says it in through a veiled context in the game. Right. Of like, yeah. she was miles away from hospitals and shit like that. Yeah. It was a like, resentment. Just take care of yourself, mom. If you're going to give birth to me, let's do it in the best pa pause. It'd be like, it, not 100%, I guess, but in my nerdy way, it'd be like if Jen was getting, I knew Jen's in the final weeks of being pregnant, and I was like, cool, I'm going to go to E3 for a month. You know what I mean? Like, well, no, fuck, the family's got to come first, stay here and take care of it. And, and, well, and then just to piggyback on that, the moment of her saying, I, you know, I, I'm sorry I hated you for so long, that still just isn't, like, deserving for me. I, I needed more, I needed her to, like, read some fucking script that said like oh a stupid ass daughter i'm about to have i don't know man like her character the entire movie she's a piece of shit and it's clear she was a piece of shit because of this like i don't think they needed to tell me any more than they did because she literally couldn't fold cardboard like that's how upset she is about all this shit that's all she had is nothing she but it no didn't family. come off as upsetness it just came off as i'm awkward because i didn't have a mom it didn't come off as i'm awkward. angry because i have a mom i'm really? awkward because yeah. i have a mom I'm oh, it, it, it came out it came off as angry if she angry. if she like are you watching true, are you watching true detective season four no yeah you are yeah jody foster's partner in it, navarro mm -hmm. right like awesome i get her uh, she isn't awkward she's angry and i i get that in her scenes where she's dealing with her love interest or mm -hmm. whatever where it's like she's been burned and hurt and blah blah her having this like super nice moment with adam scott and eating chinese food and being funny and him being like, well you never come to any like it doesn't vibe with me of like you're a deeply hurt person she's doing like an wow. aubrey plaza impersonation kind of you know just like and even that and boiled weird down, and deadpan right? and you know, Anyways, sarcastic. let's get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, he, he she comes out of that, and it, the whole point, of course, has been that if you know you can figure this out and you can do it, like you know, 
with great power what was it i don't even forget what they said now with responsibility comes power or some shit like yeah. that. you yeah. can master Fucking this a. comes great power or anything like with that. this responsibility it you'll have a lot of power <laughs> honestly we could i bet you there was 10 different takes it was they reversed had. they just yeah. happened to use one of them like it was just such a unnecessary thing that like really I, made it worse i wouldn't have found it i don't find it offensive i don't give a shit really but like Saying it once and being fine with it would have been fine. They bring it back up later on. It's like, okay, well, you're trying to make it a thing, and that's stupid. Yeah. Anyways, though, uh, let's go back to New York, New York, the Big Apple. Uh, Adam Scott is just up to it. He fucking can't stand these girls. They're making a mess. They're throwing popcorn in his house. What they're not, a joke? They're not putting cups away. Uh-oh, Emma Roberts pops up, and she says, my water broke or I peed myself. We got to go to the hospital. EMT. Mm -hmm. EMT mm -hmm. Ben Riley. Ben Parker uh, calls, sorry, <laughs> you know, force of habit. I don't talk about Uncle Ben that much. <laughs> uh, ben Parker calls 911. He's like, well, gee whiz, we're going to have to wait for the ambulance. And Emma Roberts is like, the fuck we are. You're going to drive me to the hospital. That's what a normal person would do in this mm -hmm. situation. A normal person probably, actually, no, definitely wouldn't even call the ambulance. That's not even, that's not, no, no especially an EMT who's yeah. trained. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. even though he's wearing the Uncle Ben sweater and, Uncle Ben's like, well, girls, even though you're wanted, even though we've been for one week, I've hidden you inside. You got to come to the hospital right now. The sequence, this whole scene starts off with him looking outside and goes, seems kind of quiet out there. <laughs> Just to give us the audience, like, oh, good. They're safe right for now. one week. He's been on fucking what? edge looking through the blinds. What? <laughs> and it all goes out the window because then they get in the car. They get all. There's so many people in this fucking car and uh, Hoods up. Uh, someone's pregnant. They're about the baby's coming. Little Peter Parker is coming. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And he goes, hey, hey, put your seatbelts on. And it's just like, you're not the same character you were the rest of this movie. You you were a serious character. You were an EMT. You were the one trying to like make sure her oxygen was right. Like doing all the things right. And then we get to this and it is just fucking bizarre. And so they start to drive to the hospital. Dakota Johnson shows back up in the ca uh, taxi still. Uh, they're gone, but she looks through the window and sees the vagina water there from the old birth canal. <laughs> that was like a... <laughs> and she gets her flashes. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> and what I appreciate about this, again, is like, they don't need to show her, us, that she's mastered it. She gets some flashes, like, got it. Yeah. And we're just like, okay, oh, she's oh, got she it. it. She's mastered her powers. Cool. Great. She steals the ambulance that shows up late. She then takes off with that. Uh, she gets the flash of them getting killed by uh, Ezekiel. Uh, that's why she steals this thing. So she knows they're going to get stopped. Because, uh, of course, you'd want to go to Times Square to get to the hospital. New York, very small. Everything goes to Times Square. Maddie's face is seen through the window. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how Ezekiel found him, right? Uh, and so, sure as shit, they all get stopped there when woman in the chair makes all the lights green. Uh, they're sitting there. And then Ben's like, what the hell is that? And they all look up, even the people in the back who have mm -hmm. absolutely no vision. No, there was no viewpoint. Yeah. No viewpoint. Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. God, it's him. We're going to die. And Ezekiel's like, I fucking got you. And he just One of the only shots of this movie that I thought was actually visually interesting for a superhero -y type thing yeah. was Ezekiel getting to this place of running on the side of the yeah, 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 paper. Yeah. Like, it looked like a fucking like, Spider Man video game type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. We've never seen Spider Man do that. And that was cool. Yeah. Uh, of course, the vision was him blowing them up with like a, almost a pumpkin bomb, but a grenade or whatever, because he just has those two. Mm -hmm. uh, this time around, though, he arms the grenade. And what happens through the Calvin Klein ad comes the one, the only Dakota Johnson, Madam Webb, in the ambulance, so driving through the wall. This ambulance, <laughs> this is a fucking Fast and Furious moment, man. <laughs> she fucking drives this thing off like the second, third, whatever, fourth floor of this building, Park crashing. Nine through an ad she to hit him. The future. It is insane that she does What this. pisses me the most off about it, though, is that it's all okay because she had a vision telling her that this was okay it's to do. It's gonna be fine. Otherwise, this is, like, so out of nowhere. Like, she already hit him once with a car, which was, like, maybe we limit the amount of, like, hitting of the dude with the car, <laughs> right? But it's like, the only thing he's vulnerable to. But this one, like, the <laughs> fact that the ambulance the was able, of able to jump out of, like, a third-story building and land and be to totally fine, hit him in midair, hit his leg, he kind of, like, you it's know. It's an ambulance, up. Sandy. Hilarious, dude. Yeah. This was so fucking funny and, like, ridiculous. She hits him, gets out. Girls, get in the ambulance. We got to go. Ben, don't worry. Now that you don't have the girls, you'll be fine. At this point, Ezekiel's walking. He's like fucking as far as away Tim is from me or whatever. If I was Ezekiel, I'd go, really? Fuck you. I'm going to break everybody. I'll kill everybody in Times Square right now. Instead, 
They take off the bomb or the bomb already went up. They take off in the ambulance. Ezekiel tries to catch up, but they they stop him somehow. I forget what they do to do whatever. But then the oh, they shock him. Right, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is where he's showing off with the powers. You re- now you are just showing off. And, we, and luckily, Greg, we got that line one more time. Oh yeah, yeah, because she really was showing off. Yeah. Uh, but then the, the ambulance dies shortly <laughs> after that. All right. Well, what on, we, explain what happened though <laughs> to the people that are just watching this in review, Greg. They, I mean, they had the paddles in the back of the thing, and she was like, "All right, hold on, charge the paddles, room. wait for it, wait for it." And when I tell you, shock the roof. Everybody, get your feet off everything. All right, now. And so when Ezekiel landed, so he shocked imagine it, Black exactly. Panther when he's jumping from like top of a car to top mm-hmm. of a car, right? In uh, in Black Panther one, uh, but it's Ezekiel in a like essentially a black Spider-Man suit doing the exact same thing. He jumps on top of this ambulance, and then they fucking shock it, and it shocks him, and he flies off and it is just insane and like the only preparation that dakota johnson gave them is like hey hey y'all don't touch the sides of the ambulance don't touch it (laughs) but i the the funniest part about that is like the line before that there was already some cool plan and she was like oh wow like you're you're are you like showing off and she goes no not yet and then it's this moment where they shock him and then the girls in the back go wow now you really are showing off and she goes yeah i guess so and then as we get to the fucking fireworks place, something else happens. They go, wow, now you're really showing up. <laughs> it happens again. That's not just how to drive works. home to us that Just to drive home to us that she does, in fact, master her power and her responsibility. I, I so, want to call attention to one other thing, though. They, they leave the ambulance and she grabs a little kit full of road flares and a uh, war zone smoke grenade yeah. that I'm not sure <laughs> why the ambulance has. Absolutely no idea. Yeah, that, that stood out to me, too. But she does the whole thing. What's the plan now? And then she sits there in the broke down ambulance in a bridge and goes, and we see a bunch of it, yeah. which is unexciting for us at yeah, this point. Oh my I'm like, God, oh, well, cool, that's what's going to happen. There's going to be fireworks, there's going to be a, f- a helicopter, all right, whatever. So they're going to get out fine. No big deal. I'm not worried about but it. But the future flash, they also get, she gets the past flashes of things she remembers, like mixed in here. And like some of the lines were, was it Mike Epps actually? That was just like, Hey, that place is a death trap. It's it's the fireworks. Place. There's explosions everywhere. Like they set it up in like everything that could possibly happen. And we're like, this is insane. And they They're grab the road flares and the war zone grenade. <laughs> they fucking left this scene. The fire department, the, the New York fire department, probably one of the best fire departments on the fucking planet, left this scene. Just an exposed warehouse full with of fireworks. Fucking fireworks still in it, and it's smoldering still. They didn't. Oh my god! They run to it, and uh, they back to your. There's humor here that would maybe work in a better movie where they're running up on it, and the girls are like, "She's like, all right, this rickety building that doesn't sound safe. Something else that doesn't sound safe. It's a death trap. Well, that definitely doesn't sound safe." They go in there. She gives the girls the flares and like, all right. When I tell you, start lighting them and shove them in fire. <laughs> firework crates. <laughs> and that's just it. That's the plan. She's like, this is this is the plan. And so they all do. And then, but then but she called the, hop- the Ezekiel helicopter shows too. up. Yeah, she called the helicopter. Ezekiel. She did that before we even left the ambulance. Yeah. Uh, Ezekiel shows up and he can't fucking find them, even though the lighting flares and throwing shit in or whatever. What? And, but like a one good moment where it lights a flare and then. Bah! He sticks in the, and she has to hide. I'm like, ooh, that's actually a good little beat of like yeah. kind of terror. And then we get it again. I was like, not quite as good. And then nothing else. And this all- scene is absolute insanity because it's the big final climax like action scene of this movie. And not only are uh, our heroes not costumed or not even close, they're not even powered. Like they're literally just teenage girls and Dakota Johnson, who she's got the power now, I guess, kind of. And we're seeing all the hell break loose, fireworks everywhere. There's literally explosions everywhere it is like comical michael bay Captain America, deadpool man. making a joke about this like so freaking funny and it feels like they're not even fighting they're, they're like there's no action choreography they're just kind of like duck like, just, do this everybody separate I've never seen we're running like towards this. the dead end well you get down they, the it, thing she saw blows the hole in the wall and they yeah. run up the stairs and they get to the roof and there's fireworks going off there nypd we, we can't go to the south side of the building and they start going she's like wait don't go that way and the whole collapse like oh hold on she picks up a fucking piece of rubble to be a captain america oh, shield and she's God. knocking shit away was, and it's in this moment i'm like man that one firework blew a hole through the brick wall like I, she's just strong now i guess i don't like but no and no disrespect also but like this helicopter and in no reality <laughs> the, the, with this helicopter, from this helicopter I, so funny, but man. like they would never <laughs> attempt to land on a roof of a building that was exploding they'd be like no guys no. we're not it's unsafe we, for we the pilot you gotta get higher I'll, I'll <laughs> like, get I, that close i like if you were making a parody to this you would have added like, one more like, uh <laughs> you guys i don't know you guys are he's, fucked he's like uh no we, it's not safe to land I anymore think if you, you jump in the water you'd probably be okay <laughs> we got a boat coming it was such clear audio also like this whole sequence is just comedy man 
So anyways, she's knocking things away. Uh, the girls all get separate. Oh, the, Ezekiel gets up there and he gets a firework into the, the helicopter, just kills all the fucking cops. So that thing crashes. Uh, you know, they're separated. They're pinned down. They're all about to fall in in different ways. And that's when Madam Webb is like, has the thing. If you master your powers, you can be in multiple places at once. And so she sends Ezekiel's out. Ezekiel's like, you can't save all three of them. They're all hanging. <laughs> uh, but like all three of them are now hanging. And if there was 10 girls that you were watching uh, over, there'd be 10 of them hanging over the fire. <laughs> but one was hanging, literally mm -hmm. hanging. Yep. City Sweeties hanging out by one hand. Yeah. Doing the whole like a, the other person also hanging mm -hmm. like on one of her. And then the, the skateboard lady was just kind of like holding fire. Just, just a little bit. Just a little uncomfortable. Well, they knocked the shit out of her, and then she like grabbed around the the pole and like a yeah. Red, she did spider I, pole. I, I was very much like, do you have spider power? Yeah. 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 Nope. Yeah. Just three teenage girls fucking hanging here above again an exploding fireworks facility. <laughs> that they are. Madam Webb can back. see though. Madam Webb can see. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Uh, so yeah, you can't save them all. And she's like, oh right. And then she does her spirit web versions that go Ooh. out there and are ghost. It, it's this things. moment where everything kind of zooms in on her. She kind of is glowing, and then we see the like the glowing version of her come out. It's very Princess Leia and Last Jedi. But the dialogue here is so like you, Andy. Julie, you're so funny. Hand. You're so talented. You could not have wrote things this funny. I don't think it's possible. Dakota yeah, all Johnson the there, unintentional hey, shit is great. Don't worry, I'm here to help you. And the next one. I got you too. <laughs> the third one. You're the third and final one that I needed to save. They said it was impossible, but I'm here to help. I'm like here. it was so fucking I'm Madam weird, Webb. man. Yeah. I'm Madam Webb. I'm Madam Webb. Um, and these... finally, Ezekiel's like, pa. <laughs> but he's <laughs> the note. They all fucking disappear. These bad <laughs> moments always remind me of the the fake movie in uh, Nathan for You, where they had the fake Johnny Depp impersonator with the fake Bill Gates impersonator making a fake movie. Like all of these lines of dialogue. Also, I just immediately think of. Um, in the room where Johnny, uh, uh, Tommy was so was like paying for the fucking thing. And she's like, thank you very much, Johnny. You're my favorite customer. Like all these lines are so badly ADR'd. And it, it's just, a, it's bewildering that like these choices were made, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got an email that I'm not sure if it's a joke or not, but it's hilarious. <laughs> I got a follow up about the private island, by the way, but that's a KF podcast story. Oh, oh yeah. I was, uh, here's what I got from BarkBox. An apology. We didn't know it's 69 men. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be fake because BarkBox is funny, but like, dear fellow, pup, <laughs> dear fellow pup parent, on Saturday we sent an email. Oh, yeah, see below to our subscribers encouraging them to quote 69 with a friend, end quote. Give and receive 69. To, to us, it was a simple way to simultaneously gift and receive. If they refer a pal to Bark, they both get $69 of BarkBox credit. We have since learned the email, particularly the $69, offended some. And for that, we apologize. It's <laughs> But they're they're putting the ad back in. Like, they're showing it, so they're on to it. But it Very is two fun. dogs licking each other, so that's pretty <laughs> that's cool. That's incredible. And it's for Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's fucking great. Yeah, Bark, Old. give and receive at the same time. BarkBox credit $69. All the girls get to clarify, $69 was a random but, number that our strategy team landed on. However, after seeing a distress email caused, I Googled 69 and I immediately realized this number has other meanings. What is this wholesome company? These people have never heard of this term. I mean, uh, I, I can look into this woman here who's the head of HR, apparently. Uh, she, I mean, she grew up in a great way. <laughs> she, she clearly didn't have my older brother. Yeah, no. Our, our aim is to satisfy our customers and celebrate whatever they may, parentheses, or may not be into. So they're joking, but I like that. There you go. Uh, so the fireworks are going off. She saves all the girls. Uh, Ezekiel gives chase to her. She keeps seeing the fucking S, though, the in S, her dreams. The S, the S, so she runs the up S. on this thing that's collapsing. It pins down Ezekiel. She's like, yeah, well, you, should, you, know, you were worried about them, but you should have been worried about me or whatever. And finally, the S falls, and it collapses on him, and I it do. crushes him, and they all fall, and he dies there. But then she gets knocked off because the thing's falling, too. And so she falls into the water, and then an errant firework hits her right in the fucking eyes. <laughs> in the water. A firework in the, water in the water hits her in the fucking eyes, the right? The fucking thing explodes and they could have had that, that blinder but no it's got to be the firework in the water that blinds her which doesn't make any fucking sense also worth noting and i think i don't know if we've said this or not the s is from a giant pepsi oh, yeah, we did say okay yeah, we good did say this. so we pepsi did. in fact saves the day mm -hmm. yeah it's ridiculous <sighs> and so anyways then uh sydney sweeney jumps in gets her out they all do their chest compressions because they know cpr thankfully dakota johnson's got the you know whited eyes or whatever uh she's blinded uh, but she comes back too, and they did it. We did it. Yeah, we did it. She's like, who's talking? Uh, we jump to the hospital uh, where Mary gives birth to a beautiful baby boy. Ben Riley's there. Ben, P ben Parker's there uh, to greet it. No mention of the name, but he's perfect. He's a beautiful baby and boy. And she goes, I know. 
Because she's in touch with the web now, and she knows the destiny of mm-hmm. this child. Yeah. Jesus no, I was Christ. still talking about Mary. Hmm? You're talking about Web, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Mary. Sorry. Yeah. Gotcha. Then they jump to Madam Web's room, where yeah. she comes to. That's where we get the, the baby is born, blah, blah, blah. The best line is that, you know, oh, and Ben's so excited to be an uncle. All the fun and none of the responsibility. And she's like, he'll see about that, or some shit like that. He's now she's die. like, so, She's seen fucking everything now. She knows. Man. She knows yeah. everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the, the fucking nurse comes in and goes, it's past visiting hours. Are these all family members? And the one girl goes to say something, gets caught. But she's like, "Yeah, they're mine." She leaves, and the girls finally realize all they all have a f- home, even they're though they all had homes. Mom. Include, I mean, not, let's not even forget. One of them just got their dad deported. Doesn't seem like he's a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Just got caught by the fucking government. Yeah. You know what I mean? He still seems like seems a like dad. a pretty good parent. You know, I don't know what's going on there or whatever. But now, um, from there we jump to Madam Webb's fucking baller apartment so in SF, cool. or i'm sorry new york uh up there looking out through a little web window the sanctum, sanctum. <laughs> she, ha- she is also paralyzed it turns out yeah didn't yeah. see this coming didn't yeah. see this coming from when she was in the water well again if anyone ever read a single madam web comic well, I you're like I, no, no no i'm just saying it's like what is madam web it's like oh she's in a chair and she can't see so why do we what is this character it's dakota johnson and red jacket like it's fucking crazy that they treat this like a hero reveal moment it's Weird, man. It's weird. She spins around in her chair when the girls come home to their new apartment and the ball under the control. (laughs) She has arguably the worst glasses I've ever seen. Now, here's the thing, though. There's two arguments to be made because we see arguably the worst glasses we've ever seen that kind of look like Cyclops from the original X-Men movie. Like Those look bad. Those look bad. Weird as shit. But then we do get a glimpse of her. The only glimpse of her that we get. I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. But the only glimpse we get of her in this film in her actual superhero costume which, like, we all saw leaked on the fucking Pepsi cup or whatever the hell it was, the juice box. <laughs> I don't even remember what the hell. Grape juice, I think it was, mm-hmm. where we see this. But for everybody that is not going to watch this movie and just saw Dakota Johnson in this shitty red and white uh, spider costume with nothing on her face or whatever, I need to let you know that that's not the full costume. It also includes the most comically large glasses Macho I man. have ever seen. Ooh, yeah. Macho Man, Daddy Savage, pure red, just all over half just of her sick. fucking face. And it is so, and we, I just Whoa. can't believe they did it. And this reveal was also followed by, you know, again, all the girls kind of walking into the kitchen. And this is how the lines of dialogue go. Hey, we got, we got Chinese food. Yeah, I know. Kung Pao chicken's fine. How did you know? And then because you went to a Chinese. How did you know we got the number one thing people order at a Chinese restaurant? And then Anya, bless you. Hachoo. Oh, thank you. She could tell the future. We didn't know that. I tell you what. I tell you what. How long till that gets annoying? Immediately. I'd be like, stop. Why are you? We get it. Like you. What happened to you? Why are you even weirder now? And then yeah, like. Put your those glasses. Do you see us in the future? Yeah, I do. And you're strong and power. And it's all them doing the thing in the hero poses. It's just like everything I knew you would be or whatever. Awesome. I forgot and again, but like, here's the Credit. thing, man. I am a fucking Spider-Man fan. I'm a Spider-Verse fan. And like, there's a ton of shit that I don't know. And especially once you start getting into the multiple spider women and like that situation, I really don't know that stuff. But all these moments, nothing about that. I was like, oh shit, that's this or that's that. It's like, and if I'm not doing that, then who the fuck is? It's just weird ass generic spinny camera shit of them in like weird ass suits that don't even look that good. Sydney Sweeney looked great in the suit. I, like that, admittedly. Let's yes. talk about this. But I thought they looked good. And, oh, no, I didn't like uh, Yellow Shirt, who I forgot her name. I didn't like her suit, but I like the other on, though? Suits. It's like, what's the powers? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. just what we're seeing. None of it felt iconic or special or, or like, oh, I see. What Nor do we doing. tease how they're going to get it. Like I said earlier, I think in this review, I could have gone for, what do you see in our future? And it's Sidney Sweeney getting fucking bit by an electric spot. I don't know what the fuck. You know what I mean? However, they all got their powers. It's Madam Web. Like, they're like buckled down. Like, here, just fucking let this biter bite. This biter bite. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, credits and then absolutely no mid or post credit scenes. Thank oh, good. God. I was rooting for them not to have anything because I'm like, no, we don't need, don't get more, don't tease something that I actually want to see done right. I was waiting for my Uber because uh, I was, I was knowing that I was going to go home, get my car, and then drive back to the studio. And Greg texted me. Because I asked you Greg, left early, you'll tell yeah, me about yeah. the postcard, right? He's like, yeah, I'll tell you. So I'm waiting for my Uber. I just get a text that says, RDJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to read it because it was a great exchange. <laughs> I said, RD, RDJ, and you go, lol, fuck you. I said, fuck you. <laughs> and then, then my, but then I followed it up with, uh, she see in quotes, she sees Tony and Nebula playing desk football and says she wins before Nebula does. <laughs> 
fucking hilarious. Because that's like just believable bad enough that they would like CG her in for no reason. God damn. Uh, so now it is time. I don't have Ragu Bagu for this. Girl. I do. do you oh, Greg does. Is time everything on. It's called Ragu Bagu. Ragu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast where we rank and review each and every villain in the Spider-Man universe. Currently, there are 10 on our list. Number one is Kingpin et al. from Into the Spider-Verse. Number two is Miguel, Spot, and Prowler from Across the Spider-Verse. Number three is Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2. Number four is is Lizard in The Amazing Spider-Man. Number five is Norman Osborn in Spider-Man. Number six is Electro slash Gabby in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Number seven is Eve. Elon Musk that was written long ago you can tell we can just put Elon Musk now and Riot from Venom uh, number 8 is Venom slash New Goblin from Spider-Man 3 uh, number 9 is Carnage slash Shriek from Venom 2 number 10 is Morbius from Morbius where do we want to put Ezekiel Upward. from Madam Web list. go for it Nick I would say like dang last? Is right. either last or like I mean Morbius was so bad no, but that may be above Morbius. But here's the thing, like, he dumb, but Matt man. Smith, Damn. Matt Smith, right? Yeah, we got it. Yeah, Matt Smith was not like a terrible actor 100 percent of the time. I thought this actor was Who's like Matt Smith, the guy in the bad guy in Morbius, the bad vampire, Doctor. Yeah, but we ranked Morbius as the bad guy of Morbius. Why are you talking about sure him? Did. Well, that's probably because we were because Morbius was movie. so bad. We yeah. were shitting on Jared Leto. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is a tough one because I thought this guy was just like bad on every front. Like, no, nothing, just, I think there, I think he's dead last. There was nothing. There, there Everything's was, ADR. It's terrible. It's nothing it redeemable sense. about anything. There's yeah. nothing redeemable, but it's not Morbius. Like I, I will say that. Like I laughed a lot at the ADR and stuff. And again, it's not intentional. But look at what we're ranking it against. I'm not going to argue against this. Though. I I don't have a, anything to win here. Um, but I just God don't even damn, remember the fuck. Bad. I, I think it, I think it goes last. I'm putting it at number. I'd vote number eleven. Worst I number. would say eleven. Too. All right, there you go. Tim is wrong. How am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like, Morbius, a character, is worse than this. Oh, yeah. Um, anyways, ranking these here. Into the Spider-Verse is currently number one. Uh, Across the Spider-Verse, number two. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was number three. Amazing Spider-Man 1 is number four. Spider-Man 2, number five. Venom, number six. Spider-Man, number seven. Venom 2, number eight. Spider-Man 3, number nine. And Morbius, number ten. Uh, can I start the bidding? Go, Nick. I would put this at number 10 right above Morbius. I ah. think that it's slightly more entertaining from just a fascinating standpoint than Morbius was. And I, I remember watching Morbius in five minutes and being like, this is, this is just boring. And then this movie was never boring. Obviously, this is going to be a coin flip, uh, choose your own adventure kind of thing. For me, I would put this at number 11. I would put this below Morbius. The way you've talked to him about this being a bad movie, but there's enjoyable cult, whatever kind of thing. That's how I felt with Morbius, if you remember, where I got here and I was like, awful movie but like i was laughing and i was like he's stupid and yeah the fucking vulture shit at the end da, 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 da. i didn't get that out of this one like i did not like this movie i'm i'm the same the uh, like i remember enjoying like some of the action in morbius that scene where he like takes on that whole tanker on that ship or whatever oh yeah and yeah. just seeing like the cool trails that he would leave like there was there was a bit redeemable in that i don't think there was anything redeemable in this movie this would go last place for me I would put this above the Venom movies, and I know things wow. change over time and, and all of that. I cannot in any way, shape, or form put this above Spider-Man 1 um, or even Spider-Man 3. Like I think Spider-Man 3 is uh, way better, way more redeeming, so much better things in it. Uh, Morbius is god-awful. Morbius is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. This is so much better than it. There's so much more to enjoy from it. Um, so I'd put this at, at number 10 um, under Spider-Man 3 above Morbius. So because of that, it means we got a tie here at, uh, for Morbius and... Uh, Madam Web at number 10. Wow. For Spider Verse in review. You hate to see it. You really do hate to see it. Somebody stop. It, it. happens. It happens. You guys, what, what's your guys' hopes on Craven? Oh, can I see it again? Hope he breaks the tie. <laughs> um, I'm hoping Craven can sneak in at number eight above Venom 2. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. I don't think it is, man. I don't think it's possible I, either based on the trailer, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm just yeah. hoping this movie does well enough to warrant a sequel. Well, everyone, let us know in the comments below if you're planning on watching this movie um, or if you're not, what you thought of our review. Until next time. Thanks for crawling on the ceiling by. I used to say swinging by. But <laughs>